right. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Praise God. All Good right. to see everybody. Okay. Welcome to Covenant Life Church, and this is our di discipleship course. I'm Apostle Dr. Linda, and a handsome man sitting next to me is Apostle Jeff. Uh, Amen. And he's going to do the teaching tonight. On this is on handsome. Amen. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, honey. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Almost 35 years. We'll be 35 years September 20th. And the 19th is my birthday. And the 20th, 20th is, is anniversary. anniversary. And so see, I either get them both or I miss all of them. <laughs> He's never missed. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Jeff is very sentimental. Amen. Okay. So anyway, welcome to our dis discipleship course. Amen. And um, by the way, uh, we're, we're praying for another 35, right? Mm -hmm. That'll make you, what, about 105, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. But we want to thank you for joining us tonight. And I'm going to ask uh, Apostle Jeff if he start out with the prayer tonight. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time to be together. Lord, we thank you for the miracle of this technology that can connect us all uh, during this time of plague and national unrest. Lord, we thank you for all the people of God that join us in, this, uh, in these lessons. I ask for the Holy Spirit's anointing upon myself uh, to present this the way you'd have it presented. And I also ask for the Holy Spirit anointing upon all the people that they have eyes to see and ears to hear that I would bless them and help them in their walk with the Lord. And as we seek to move in gifts of power, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So once again, we want to thank you for joining us, and this is our... D discipleship class mm -hmm. and uh, I brought the schedule um, just want to make sure that we're all on the same sheet here amen quite literally so uh, in our dis discipleship curriculum we have four phases and we're actually in the third phase and if you want to pick up the other phases everything is free here you can just go right on our website yeah. it's www.covenant-life-church.org and you'll see that our wonderful webmaster there y Yvette she's listed all everything on our website and uh, you can go in there and find all the other courses, uh, all the other classes. They've all been, uh, it's either audio or video. A lot of them are audio because up to this point, until we had the, the virus kick in, uh, we weren't doing video. But, uh, but since the uh, virus has kicked in, the Lord has moved us into video. Amen. So uh, we've now been, she's been posting all of that too. So you can see audio and video. Mm -hmm. It's also on U YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's lots of places that you can go to find all of these classes, okay? Mm -hmm. and, I'll, and I'm just going to give a plug for this because a lot of churches charge for this. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, we are called to raise and train as well as raise babies in the mm -hmm. church and, and have church. Amen. Amen. The one of our foundational uh, visions and mandates from the Lord was to raise and train. Mm -hmm. And so Apostle Jeff and I, we prayed about it. And right. uh, so most everything we, we do is, is free. And uh, we praise God for yeah, the... freely you have received, freely give. Amen. So we just, uh, we believe God for financing, and yeah. we, we believe, uh, praise God, that you'll sow in as you are being led. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And uh, But we just wanted to let you know that we're in the third, what we consider our third phase of this overall curriculum. Mm -hmm. And uh, this class tonight is the Power Gifts. And then next Monday on the, uh, uh, the 22nd of June... Uh, should be releasing the voice of God. That'll be the last class in this prophetic uh, phase. And mm -hmm. then uh, we're going to start on the 13th of July. We're going to take a mm -hmm. week or two off. And on the 13th of July, we're going to start with spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And all those who are watching, I know we have some members watching tonight. Amen. We appreciate your prayers. Amen. Because mm -hmm. uh, the enemy does not like to be exposed. And so we're very careful when we start going into demonology and those kind of things. So we ask your your prayers of yeah. pr protection. And we'll cover. We'll contact our oversight for prayer mm -hmm. for Amen. Uh, coverage. You know for Amen. So protection. just wanted to let you know what the schedule is, and I'll mm -hmm. re repeat that later. Also, Amen. Mm -hmm. um, but I uh, just wanted to once again direct you to our website, mm -hmm. and we want to thank you for for joining us tonight. Also, mm -hmm. um, just getting prompted if you're not on our uh, mailing list. Okay, we invite you to be part of our mailing list. And uh, we send out a, we've send out we been sending out a weekly newsletter to update everybody what's going on with the church and the classes and all these kind of mm -hmm. things. Okay, and uh, so our pastor, Pastor Andrea, uh, does our admin for us, and uh, she's on the other end of the chat right now. Amen. Right. And so we want to invite you to 
chat in your email address right. so she can capture it and add you to the mailing list so that Amen. you can get our newsletter. Uh, we also send out what's called e blasts. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we let everybody know uh, what's coming up. And we yeah. we typically, in, in most years, you'll see on our website, we've had a lot of conference speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very blessed to have uh, some of them, what we got, regard as the very best in, in Christian and international. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, uh, and our conferences are free too. It's mm -hmm. just for don donation, whatever you give yeah. them, the, the offering. We take plate. up an offering at the conference, that's all. Amen. And that's and, and by the way, if you give us your admin, your email address or your phone number or something uh, you're not going to be hounded by us for money or donations or anything like that the only reason we like that is to have that is so that we can get in touch with you and let you know what we're doing and, and so you can participate if you want to uh, it, it's hard sometimes uh, you know when you find out that there's people that would have come or would have participated if they'd known about it so yeah, you know Amen. So and we just yeah. we do everything we can to make it known, but you can't, you know. Amen. So we just get the get the word out uh, through the through the e e blast. So that's the point. Uh, and that's why <laughs> we don't even have a lot of snail mail addresses for our members because mm -hmm. we do yeah, we've done everything by email. So members and covenant partners, we have a we have a prayer claw. Amen. So the Lord laid it on us heart to to get some prayer claws going. Amen. Yeah. Especially during the season of COVID nineteen. Amen. So yeah. these are anointed prayer claws. We've prayed over these prayer claws. Amen. They're anointed for healing, deliverance, and salvation. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we, we have one for every member yes. and covenant partners. Okay. So we've mm -hmm. sent the covenant partners out because they, they have, we, we had their snail mail. Uh, but members, we, we need your snail mail address. So if you can email it into me or Andrea, I'd appreciate it so that mm -hmm. we can mail these prayer claws out to you. Okay. Yeah. And they're nice. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's a, it's pretty. Uh, one yep. one lady even said that uh, uh, she um, she 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 put it in a in a picture frame. And she she <laughs> really liked it because it was pretty. Yeah. Amen. So that's that's I put really it nice. In my Bible. Amen. Praise yeah. God. So uh, another tip I just want to tell you uh, something that I do and and uh, and others do also. Uh, you can take some anointing oil and mm -hmm. just just take a handkerchief or a uh, or some kind of T-shirt and cut yeah. it up into small squares. Okay, and just anoint the whole thing. If mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't want to use these to actually put in your pillowcases or something like that, you can take another piece of cloth. We always take white, okay, and and anoint it. And I stick little, I I, I cut it up, and mm -hmm. I and I stick it in our pillowcases. Yeah. Amen. And, yeah, and it, make sure it's cloth, though. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, because for whatever reason, the anointing seems to transfer to cloth, but not to wood and plastic or. Well, that's scriptural. It's based on scriptural, right? Because of, of the well, precedent yeah, that, that, that was yeah. sent. But I think, you know, the anointing is a living thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And cloth came from a living thing. Mm -hmm. So yes. I think that's that's just my opinion. I don't have the yeah. you know, yeah. scripture Yeah, but, but we know from scriptural precedence that they yeah. they, they anointed cloth. Okay. Right. So that's where, where we're getting where, that. Where that it really from. came from was that uh, uh, there was extra, extraordinary miracles worked by the hands of Paul Amen. who took even napkins and parts of his apron Amen. And pe God. to people and demons were driven out and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people were healed so Amen. Uh, you know we, we think that you know the anointing can be transferred by cloth. Right so I'm just sharing that tip mm -hmm. with you and that was the thought behind these prayer cloths because we're mm -hmm. in a time of, of crisis here with the pandemic and all that with the plague and uh, praise God we also want to make mm -hmm. sure people get saved Amen. This is the time to really spread the word. Right. And so I just want to give that tip, though. If you don't want to use the, the pretty cloth, you can you can anoint another cloth and cut it up and put it in the pillowcases or send right. it to a person. Okay, I really you know encourage you. And it, it's a point of faith. You yeah. know, it's mm -hmm. it, everything is 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 by is by faith. And it's a step so, of faith backed amen. up by the word of God. Amen. Absolutely. So just want to share that with you. Okay. So having said all that, we'll just turn it over to Apostle Jeff and, and okay. let let him roll. All right. Uh, if you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Uh, tonight we're going to discuss and teach on the uh, power gifts. So uh, I just thought it would be important tonight to just go over the whole list of gifts there in, in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, 
<clears throat> for the purpose, just to, we're getting close to the end of the uh, prophetic session for discipleship. So uh, I think, you know, we need to review some things and Amen. come up to speed on Amen. something new. All right. All right. So verse seven, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, that's a very important verse just from the start. It's important. The manifestation of the Spirit, when the Spirit manifests, it's given to each one for the profit of all, or the, you know, the blessing of all. So the motive for using any gift is to be a blessing to the church, all right, amen, to be a blessing uh, to people, okay? Amen. The gifts aren't given to make a hero out of somebody or to, or to build a ministry or, you know, or it's meant to bless people. And as we study the power gifts tonight, you'll see that the power gifts, in fact, all the gifts, are given not only to bless people, but it verifies the truth of the Word of God. When a message is preached, and then you go out there and lay hands on the sick, and pow, people will start getting healed. They know that the power of God is present, and they just heard the Word of God. And those two things have to go together. Uh, you have to preach and teach the Word, and then gifts manifest. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes in the New Testament, the gifts manifested first, and then they preached the word. Amen. But you, you don't see one without the other. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we're, and that, that's an important, just the beginning there, mm -hmm. that the manifestation comes for the blessings of all. Of all. That includes yourself. All right? There's a blessing in moving in the gifts. It's a, a lot of joy, for one thing. Amen. All right? And then it says, four, two, one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All right, so. Mm -hmm. And then it concludes, but one and the same spirit works all these things. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. Now sometimes when folks read that as he wills, they think that you just sit and wait until God wills to manifest something. <laughs> okay. Now. It's true that the Holy Spirit is God. He dwells within us, and he decides what gifts are going to manifest in what place, and he has a purpose. You know, when gifts manifest, there's a purpose for why they're manifesting. If uh, discerning of spirits is manifested, God wants to show uh, either what the angels are doing so we can get in line with what the army of heaven is doing, so the army on, of God on earth can match it, or it reveals what devils or demons are doing, so we know where we need to fight, where we need to put our defenses up, what's going on, you know? Uh, so there's a reason why they come into manifestation. And the Spirit decides what we need, when we need it. But who gets what gift is our decision. We have more to say about what gifts manifest in our lives <clears throat> because it's operated by faith. So you can speak in tongues by faith, right? I can also stop, right? All right, because it's a gift God gives me. To use. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? All right, so we just wanted to make that clear. All right, so to another by the same Spirit, 
to another gifts of healings, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. All right. So I'd like to, we've already discussed at length what the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge is. Now in verse 9 it says, to another, faith by the same spirit. <clears throat> so when it says to another or to one this is given, to one this is given, it means, it doesn't mean that only one person can have it. It means that, it, that, that it's available to, to other people. You know, gifts are operated by faith because they're grace gifts. You can't earn them. You can only believe God for them. Seek spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. And Linda's going to talk about that more tonight. <clears throat> but this, in verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit. And I notice that it's emphasized that there's just one Holy Spirit doing all these things. But we wanted to make a note here to another faith by the same Spirit. That we're saved by grace through faith. <clears throat> this is not that faith. We get answers to prayer by faith. We pray, believe, we receive. This is a gift of the Holy Spirit, all right, called the gift of faith. And what it does is it makes, it gives you the strength to believe. In other words, like Paul, when he was on a boat and the tackle and the sails and the anchors and everything is gone, the cargo, it gives the faith to believe that you're going to be delivered out of that storm. You, you follow me? It's a supernatural faith that just comes to us from the Spirit. It holds us and keeps us in a place of faith. And, you know, the, the, how the word says, you know, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there. Well, you know, it, it would take a, a miracle moving faith to do that. And that's where the gift of faith comes in. And you can believe for that. I've had that faith three, four times maybe in my entire life. I want to tell you, it is fabulous. It is a joy, boy. You sit there just as comfortable and calm. You know that God is going to come through. There isn't a slightest bit of doubt in your mind. The devil can't toy with you. God is supernaturally providing you with the faith you need to, to do that mm -hmm. task or that mission or to mm -hmm. believe for something. You know, it, you, they, it, the gift usually comes when you're in a pretty tight spot, mm -hmm. you know, and if something doesn't come through for you, it's going to have a very heavy uh, negative impact, and you, you've just got to get the answer. So there's supernatural mm -hmm. faith. Supernatural mm -hmm. faith, the gift of faith is involved in healings, miracles, and deliverances, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? You, it, it, it helps you minister. It's a, it's a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. It's something that the Lord walked in all the time. And there wasn't any doubt in his mind about anything. Amen. And we're going to get into tonight how we can do the same thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Maybe not at the level he did it, but we can have supernatural yeah. faith. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can believe for that. Amen. Amen. And then we go on here. And then it's by the same, to another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. Gifts, notice the plural, gifts, plural, of healings, plural, by the same Spirit. So that's telling us that there's a gift of healings and there's more than one way. There's more than one way to be healed. Okay, it says gifts of healings. Okay, so there's just you pray and believe and get healed. That's one way. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Then probably the gift of faith is going to come in there. Mm -hmm. All right? Then there's the laying on of hands, call for the elders of the church, and they'll pray the prayer of faith and anoint with oil, and the sick will be healed. Mm -hmm. That's another way. Okay. Another way is you may be sitting in a congregation, and the Spirit of God is moving. And let me just say that when the Spirit of God is moving, doesn't mean you hear harps and trumpets and angels all over the place. No. When the presence of God is in a place, there's a peaceful sensing of power. And, and it comes in here. Amen. Not out here. Amen. In here. The kingdom of God is within you. The power of God begins within you. Amen. And it starts in a human being and it manifests outward. Mm -hmm. So another way of healing is somebody can stand up in a meeting and just speak the word of healing. Mm -hmm. You know, stopped up ears are healed. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. Uh, muscles tears mm -hmm. are healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, stomach viruses are healed. Amen. COVID-19 is healed. Yes, amen. I mean, when they're doing that from their spirit, not their head. Right. <clears throat> when that's flowing out of their spirit, mm -hmm. there's healing. Amen. Okay? Now, in their, any given congregation, some will receive, some won't. Mm -hmm. Well, s listen, mm -hmm. you can manifest a gift, but you can't control how it's received. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Okay, so you might pray healing and lay hands on 90 people, and two of them got it. So does that mean you failed, you know, 88 other times? No, the person, the ministry receiver has to have faith too, which is why it's important to preach and teach first. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So sometimes, if you're going to minister healing, and I'm not talking about in a service, I'm talking about <coughs> at home, at Thanksgiving, <laughs> or, Amen. you know, any place it may show up. I've prayed for people in, in parking lots, Amen. and stores, and diners, and every place. Amen. And I'll tell you truthfully, it's easier to get unbelievers to believe for healing <laughs> than it is to get believers to believe it. But in any case, you may minister, it doesn't hurt. In fact, I think it not only doesn't hurt, I think it's important that you know some healing scriptures. Okay? And you can tell some people, this is what the Word of God says. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So, and you always ask somebody that you don't know first. Of course, nowadays you can't lay hands on anybody. But, <laughs> but, That's different. <laughs> yeah. But you, you ask for something, do you mind if I touch it? Especially if you're a guy and they're a woman, or you're a woman and they're a guy, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and you don't touch anybody any place except their shoulder or their head, maybe. You know what I, you know what I mean? So... Well, if you, you have to use some wisdom when, right. you, when you're ministering. Some, just some common sense. But these yeah. days, like Pastor Jeff says, no, we can't touch anyway, so now we just release. Praise <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. God. But you know what? You know, if we were in a service or we were someplace with people, I'd touch them anyway. You know, as long as they're okay with that. Amen. Yeah, as long as they're okay with that. I Amen. mean, the government can't tell the Holy Spirit what to do. Amen. Well, I was Praise thinking God. of COVID, you know. You know I understand. Stuff, yeah. You know, we're not supposed to <laughs> but anyway, even shake hands on you. But, but the truth is, I mean, uh, reality is, I mean, we're hearing healings and we're believing by faith. And, mm -hmm. and you all get healed right through the Facebook. Praise God. So there's and no time for some healings. That's right. That, we're, we're, getting, we're getting feedback of, of healings. Praise God. So mm -hmm. God is moving. Amen. He's Amen. not limited by technology or whether you lay hands on a person or not. That's Amen. right. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're so glad Amen. about that. <laughs> Amen. So there's gifts of healings. Now, another thing I want to mention along with this gift, you'll hear some people say there's no gift of deliverance or no gift of casting out demons. That's true. There isn't. It comes on this, gifts of healings. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
be, uh, because you'll read in the in the New Testament where Jesus healed them all and cast out spirits with his word. Amen. He, you know, he Amen. had a mass evangelism yeah, he campaign did. going on there. Amen. Praise God. I mean, not, you know, and he was in the flesh like us. Amen. Amen. He could get tired like us. Sure. So instead of laying hands on mm -hmm. 2,000 people, yeah. Yeah. he stood up. This is another way of healing. He stood up and gave the faith command. Right, and when he gave the command, mm -hmm. people were healed and people were delivered. Yes, spirits were cast out of people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So deliverance is part of the gifts of healings. Okay. Yes. Are you there? Yes. You with me now? Yes, we're with you, honey. <laughs> so you can uh, be comfortable mm -hmm. in the deliverance and deliverance ministry. <coughs> I believe mm -hmm. the gift of faith. Mm -hmm. And the gift of healings go together. Amen. So uh, let me just interject something really quick. So sure. under the, the category of gifts of healings, mm -hmm. okay, uh, some years ago there was a there's a concept by John and Paula Sanford. This is mm -hmm. like 20 some years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they're real senior prophets. Amen. They I don't were, know if they're still around anymore. Their yeah, daughter is. Yeah, they're still alive. They are? Yeah, yeah. I and know their daughter's still in they, they have tremendous revelation. Yeah. Uh, they had revelation on the prophetic about the same time the bishop did, way back right. in the 70s mm -hmm. and 80s. Okay, mm -hmm. these were like the first ones that really came out to acknowledge themselves as mantle prophets. Right. Okay, John and Paula Sanford. Right. They what have a, tremendous... What a flock they have flock tremendous, they for that. Yeah, they have tremendous books. Uh, the Lord had me reading these books years ago. Yeah. And uh, one of the... Um, one of the, the concepts is called inner healing. And yeah. there was a to-do about this some years ago. Oh, boy. Um, but, there but, still is in some places. <laughs> but inner healing just means you need to be healed on the inside. Right. Okay, That's It means all. you have a broken heart, somebody mm -hmm. betrayed you, somebody did something, somebody backstabbed right. you, somebody called right. you a bad name, and you're hurt from that. There's rejection, mm -hmm. you know, different things, and, and you're healed. Uh, you've right. got to be healed on the inside. Right. So inner healing, it, it, that's under gifts of healing. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so gifts of healing can cover spirit, soul, and body. Amen. All right? And so yeah. I just wanted to make, make that point. So that's why Apostle mm -hmm. Jeff is saying that ca casting out demons and, and all these kind of things, deliverance, it, it goes mm -hmm. in accordance with gifts of healings. Right, right. O okay? Mm -hmm. So just wanted to wanted to cover that. Okay, mm -hmm. so when, when, we, when we're prophesying and we say you're called to deliverance ministry, mm -hmm. it's, it falls under gifts of healings. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, but um, it seems to be the case, right. uh, it, it, our experience has been, let's say it that, that way, mm -hmm. uh, because I can't point to a scripture and say this, mm -hmm. uh, but um, there's, there's people when we're saying, when we're, when we're prophesying and saying that you're, you're called to deliverance ministry, mm -hmm. um, more times than not, you're, you're kind of focused in, in that lane, more or less. But it's under healings. There's going to be mm -hmm. physical healings, there's going to be inner healings, and right. casting out of, of demons. Right. Okay, so just wanted to clarify that. Yes, thank you, dear. And because here's this, the situation. To say there's you deal with, with bitterness or with anger or rejection, and it comes from, you know, not just one slight or an insult or something, although it can, but, you know, maybe you were abused when you were young, and there's a ongoing bitterness there, that demons grab a hold of and use against you. Now, a demon cannot possess a Christian. You have the Holy Spirit in there. But a demon can afflict your mind. The only thing a demon has to work with is uncrucified flesh and unrenewed mind. Mm -hmm. And so once a spirit is cast out, Whatever the root problem is, that has to be healed. Yes, absolutely. So that's why it comes under gifts of healings. Because mm -hmm. if you just cast a spirit out and that root problem isn't solved, mm -hmm. that spirit is going to come back. And excuse me, on that note, that's why um, I'm when, when you're counseling with me, okay, mm -hmm. I, I always uh, encourage people that... Um, not only are we casting out demons, right? But like mm -hmm. Apostle just said, you've got to counsel for the issue. That's right. why that's why the ministry of counseling is mm -hmm. very important. It's mm -hmm. not you, you know, it's not just enough 
just to cast a demon out because of like mm -hmm. Apostle Jeff saying, you got to get to the root issue, mm -hmm. okay? And there are strongholds in our mind. Yes. Okay, we have attitudes. Mm -hmm. We have ungodly beliefs. Right. Okay, and those ungodly beliefs have to be rooted out. They That's sure got to be dealt with, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and counseling helps deal mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you get to the issue. Okay, Linda, why do you think that way? Okay, mm -hmm. why did you think that you're still on active duty military? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and five years later, I'm a civilian. What, what's wrong, Linda? Why, what are you thinking? I was See? trying to deliver you that a long time ago. Yeah. And, and so, <laughs> all right, and so where is your mind at? What, what are you right. thinking? See, as a man thinks his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. So the counseling ministry, because there, there have been people out there that really put down the counseling ministry. Right. And, and, and you know, God has provided yeah. all of these resources mm -hmm. to get us healed. Praise right. God. Hey, and and there's a reason for it, okay? Right. And, and so, if you have a prophetic counselor, praise God. Amen. Because they can use a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and get right to the Glory root. Glory to God. Amen. Instead of going through hours of paying <laughs> some psychologist to go over, did you love your and mother? And we're not putting them down. Amen. No, we're not. But <laughs> we're saying there's yeah. a better way. Well, there's prophetic psychologists, too. Praise God. So, well, that's true. <laughs> there you go. But, but the point is, there's a reason. So, like Apostle just says, you got to get to the root issue, okay? Mm -hmm. And and you got to you got to dispel those ungodly beliefs so that those demons right. don't have anything to cling Come on to. Come back to, okay? You so know, you need, the only yep. thing you have to Amen. say to the devil is no. That's it. That's the only word you have to say to the devil. No. No, you're not putting that in my mind. Amen. No, you're not afflicting my body. No, you're not going to, you know, That's deceive right. me with that garbage. That's right. Amen. No, you're not. I'm not going to walk around with a broken heart. No, I'm not going to miss right. having a fulfilling relationship with a man or woman because of what somebody 10 years ago did. This is a different time and a different mm -hmm, person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you got nothing to say about, about what right. I do. Right. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey. That's good. Yeah. So, all right. So, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit <coughs> to another, the working of miracles. All right, so these are the power gifts. Faith, that supernatural faith, gifts of healings, and now working of miracles. Mm -hmm. Working of miracles. Now, this is uh, kind of hard to explain, but miracles are different than healings. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, yeah. Well, we can use an example from our our own experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We needed a deferment. The, the army wanted to send Linda and I. No, not me, but I married to her, so I had to go go too. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <coughs> so they wanted us to go to a school. We had to stay to finish our training. We were in prophetic training at right. the time, mm -hmm. and we were called right. to ministry. And we wanted to finish our ministry training, and so we needed what they call a deferment. You, you, you defer for one year. Well, you know, commanders don't like it when you want to defer or do something different. I mean, they get upset about it. Well, these colonels decided that Linda wasn't going to get a deferment. And they were fighting us every day of every week for a long time. And we just kept praying and believing that we needed a deferment. Now, the deferment, it wasn't healing or anything. It was a miracle, and it would take a miracle. Well... This, this one colonel told Linda, look, if the colonels say you're going, you're going. If they say you can't have a deferment, you can't have a deferment. <coughs> God or no God. Yeah, that's what he made the mistake on. Big mistake. When Linda <laughs> came home and told me that, I started laughing. We both sat there in our living room and just laughed. We said, Lord, they're not challenging us now. They're challenging you. Wow. And a supernatural miracle, a door opened. Mm -hmm. And we got to talk to somebody who had the, th the authority to grant a deferral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that hadn't happened, it would have impacted, I think, the rest of our life in oh, ministry. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
And so our timing would have been off. Yeah. God is timing for your ministry. Right. Amen. Now he can redeem the time, but absolutely. But we we also believed at that time he wanted us to exert our faith. Yeah. And push through that. Okay. Because yeah. the devil was challenging them. The devil was mm -hmm. testing us and right. trying to block it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, That's sorry, right. honey. Yeah. yeah. So that was a miracle. So mm -hmm. working of miracles, it's power. Also, your eye is a miracle. Well, that was a healing. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. we, get, we get all kinds of stuff. <laughs> hey, hey. Amen. How is that a work of miracle? God's power came on the scene and pushed yeah. all that negativity. Yeah, amen. All that resistance. Wow. Out of the way, yeah. opened a door, and we walked through it, and bang! And by Two the way, hours later, we had what the colonel said we couldn't have. And we were in a 30-day partial fast, too, I will yeah. just tell you. It, well, was a, it, yeah. was, it was a partial fast. It was, excuse me. It was over the course of 30 days. It was a, it, it was a battle for 30 days, yeah. boy, because we were in a partial fast. Yeah, partial we sure were. We were going uh, like only one meal a day or something like that. That's what I mean by partial fast, because we had yeah. to sustain ourselves for... That's a length of time, you, you yeah. know. And I had to do physical fitness and all this. Oh my! So you know, you got to keep your strength up. Yeah. But but we were fasting for a month. Right. And corporate. And, and I was working at the trade back yeah. then, so and I couldn't. Prayer of agreement. Yeah. I couldn't we were, be. Uh, every day we were pounding the enemy. Yeah. You know, we were yeah. believing God that you know. Well, you can't be out good. on a deck on a construction yeah. site with no food. Right. You know, you'll pass out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, that's a good example. Then. Right. So that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know when. The axe head floated. That was a miracle. When Naaman the Syrian dipped in the river Jordan seven times, mm -hmm. right? That was a miracle and a healing. Mm -hmm. See, these things can all flow together. Like we said in the beginning of this, uh, when we began teaching this, when you go to minister to somebody, don't worry about what gift is manifesting. Just manifest. Amen. Praise God. Yep. God knows what he's doing. Amen. You don't have to worry about, well, gee, I hope I'm doing this right. You know, if you're <laughs> going with God in the spirit, you're right. Yeah, amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, I, I don't know that we need to say anything else about working of miracles. Amen. Uh, I do hear in verse 10, before we talk about to another prophecy, I want to, and to another discerning of spirits. Did we do that yet? Yes, we uh, did the, the revelation gifts. But if you have okay. something, just tell them, honey. Oh, no, I don't right. have anything. I just want to make sure I'm covering everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had covered. Now, <clears throat> it says to another, different kinds of tongues. And Okay, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, the reason I'm bringing this, what do we got here? We have a yeah, watch in there. You said Christians cannot be possessed. I thought in service you have been taught that Christians can be possessed because the possession lies in the unsaved flesh soul's part of them. Is this not the case? <coughs> what I'm saying is a, a demon cannot control you. All right? I don't I don't believe a Christian has a demon in their body. Yeah, let me, uh, I think this is a kind of a semantics thing. What, one second, yeah. Jeff. I, Go I, I ahead, go for it. In, inspiration here. I had a feeling okay. you would. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, when we've talked about possession uh, in, in church and all that, okay, we're talking about possessed in your spirit, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, um, when, when you're saved, mm -hmm. okay, the Holy Spirit moves in Amen. to your spirit, okay? So you, so our terminology, and it's probably, and I really feel it's a semantics thing here. Okay, we no longer say that you are possessed, but you're oppressed. Okay, if you're unsaved, the Holy Spirit does not dwell in your spirit. You're not mm. saved. That's right. So you can be possessed. Amen. That, which that means demon can move in your body. He can Absolutely. move in spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and you've seen manifestations of people who are possessed. You know, these, these serial killers, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, how in the world can they kill these people and not even have any remorse about it? Okay? They're possessed. Okay? So, but when you're saved, okay, you invite the Holy Spirit into your spirit. Amen. So, we do believe that you can be oppressed. Okay? So, that's the semantics part. It's not possession. It's oppression. 
-hmm. Okay, so you can be oppressed right. to the point where your flesh, your flesh is not saved. That's remember, right. when you get saved, it's your spirit. Right. Your, remember what the Word says. Mm -hmm. Okay, your mind has to be renewed and your flesh has to be crucified. Your mind and your flesh are not saved. Okay, <laughs> that's why you got to renew your mind with the Word of God. That's right. Amen. And you got to crucify your flesh. Right. The Spirit talks about in Galatians, your mm -hmm. flesh has fleshly desires which are sinful and get you into trouble. And yeah. that's why, you know, we can be tempted in our in our flesh and, and in our soulish realm, with our emotional realm. The enemy will sit and tempt you, do something, look at that picture, look at that picture, do that, do that, do that, right? And so that's where you can be oppressed and those things need to be cast out. Okay? So I, I hope that that covers it. So we didn't yeah. mean to confuse people. Right. So when we're talking about... And sometimes when a spirit is cast out, it's released from you. It releases your mind. Sometimes there's a manifestation of that release. And yeah, many sometimes, times. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah, and so, uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes it confuses people when we say cast out. It's We're saying it's cast out of your flesh, not cast out of your spirit because you're saved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we regard the, the word possession as in your spirit, right. where spirit, soul, and body is being possessed mm -hmm. by something, uh, like the example of these serial killers, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hope that clarifies it. Yeah, was that, was that right? Okay. I hope so. Okay. I don't know how to do it any better. Okay, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, All right. Yeah. So... <clears throat> In the, in the 10th verse now, 1 Corinthians 12, 10, where it talks about another different kinds of tongues to another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, those are supernatural gifts. They're utterance gifts. All right? Mm -hmm. And so I want you to understand that when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you get a prayer language. It's called speaking in tongues. All right? Okay? That's my prayer language. My spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons the flesh resists it. Mm -hmm. Because it's got nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. It can't understand any of it. Your mind just says, well, what in the world? Yeah. And starts thinking about what's for dinner or <laughs> is there mail or, you know. Anything. You're right. But you keep pressing with your spirit. Right, amen. All right? Now, what we're talking about here in verse 10, tongues and interpretation of tongues is a, is a gift. Mm -hmm. It's not... Uh, your prayer language. The way it works, I think sometimes, see in the early days for me in, in Pentecost, there was tongues and interpretation all the time. And, and why? Because it was taught <coughs> and they made room for that gift to manifest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After worship, mm -hmm. they'd have what like a holy hush. Mm -hmm. It would just be a quiet. Mm -hmm. And someone would give a message in tongues mm -hmm. and someone else would interpret it. Mm -hmm. So in, in chapter 14, when you start seeing them talk about, you know, <coughs> about the tongues and the restrictions on its use and things like that, it's not talking about your prayer language. It's talking about the tongues with interpretation. No one should give a message in tongues in church unless there be an interpreter present. Well, usually, <laughs> in, in, in those churches in those days, usually the pastor's wife gave a message in tongues and the pastor interpreted it. <laughs> but it is... Utterance gifts. Now, when you have tongues with interpretation, that's equivalent to prophecy. Now, prophecy is greater. The Bible says, not greater in, in you know usefulness, but it's greater 
in the fact that it only takes one gift. Whereas with the tongues with interpretation, it takes two gifts. And so, now that we've learned about prophetic and prophets and prophecy and all the wonderful things that have come, that God has restored to the church in the last 40 years, Amen. Uh, you know, you don't hear tongues with interpretation that much anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, prophecy is better. In fact, Paul says, I wish you all, you know, that you seek spiritual gifts, but especially that you prophesy. Prophecy was something that went on in the, in the New Testament church all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to go over it tonight. Maybe I do. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but anyway, there's some that say all those gifts disappeared, fell away. Well, I'm going to tell you, the church that Peter and Paul belonged to needed power. Mm -hmm. They needed healings, deliverance. They need the gospel message had to be verified by miracles. You see in Acts 8, when Philip went to Samaria, and he started preaching the gospel, what impressed the pe people was not Philip's great preaching, but the man by the miracles which he did. And that's something. Mm -hmm. So the miracles verified the truth of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's what gifts are for. They verify that Jesus is Lord, the truth of the New Testament, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But I just wanted you to be clear mm -hmm. on discerning that... Uh, different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues, uh, that's not your prayer language, okay? And then it finishes up, but one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing each one individually as he wills. Now, <clears throat> there's some gifts that are going to manifest in your life and ministry more than others. As a believer, you are in possession of the Holy Spirit. You are a candidate to be used in any one of the nine gifts at any time. Amen. You don't have to be an apostle or a prophet mm -hmm. or a pastor or any of the fivefold. Mm -hmm. You just have to be a believer. Amen. Okay? Just believe. Amen. Amen. That's right. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that there, all the gifts are available to you, mm -hmm. but there's certain ones that will manifest in your life and ministry mm -hmm. more than others, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Now, I like the fact that the Bible says, seek spiritual gifts. So even if I have some that I don't use very much or have never seen manifest very much, I can still seek God for them. I'll tell you right now, we're seeking gifts of healings and miracles right now. Mm -hmm. Linda and I are. Mm -hmm. Because I think prophecy is great, mm -hmm. all right? But you know you have to wait a while and go through some things to get a prophecy to come to pass. Man, if you've got a broken arm and you need a healing, that can happen right now. And we all need to be healed from something. Praise Amen. God. So yes. all the gifts are great. Praise God. We want them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We also know that this is the season where God is releasing more miracles mm -hmm. and healings. And so right. we know that we're in the timing of God to really press in for this. That's right. You know, we've seen all the other gifts uh, right. more Especially often. Especially prophecy. Yeah, except for miracles. Right. Um, so we're asking God, we're pushing on God to, hey, mm -hmm. give us some more miracles, Lord. Right. You know, mm -hmm. give us the, the anointing. Right. But we're called to it. We, right. we want to see it manifest more. See, you have to, he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. So you got to always be present. Right. You know, amen. amen. So it's, it's very important that, that you keep on asking God. Very keep right. on Keep on talking to him about it. Okay, mm -hmm. you have not because you ask not. And so we're always asking. Mm -hmm. And this is why I said the other day, I said when, when you get into a place where you, you become stagnant uh, or, you're, or you're no longer pressing God for something, mm -hmm. that's where you gotta, that's where you got to watch it. Because, yeah. the, you know, the, the, the devil is always... You know, he doesn't get uh, weary. 
but we get weary in well doing. That's right. And so we, you know, we don't want to get worn out. Amen. Amen. And we want to keep on, uh, uh, right. keep on pressing God because, like I taught the other night, uh, like the revelation the Lord gave me, when the cup gets full, mm -hmm. you keep praying, praying, praying. Mm -hmm. When that cup of prayer gets full, mm -hmm. and God knows the timing for it, boom, there's going to be a suddenly, and something's going to take place, right. and you're going to have a breakthrough. Right. Praise God. And it's up. Uh, only the right. Lord knows the timing. Mm -hmm. But breakthrough will occur. If, if you don't, if you don't faint, okay, right. amen. A amen, don't faint is what the scripture says. Now, I just have two other points that I'd like to go over, and then we'll have uh, Linda give her portion. And I'm going to do this quick, too, if it's okay. okay. Wait, everything's fine. Take, take your time, honey. Okay. Thank you, dear. Yeah, I was, I was just getting the prompting, as a matter of fact, that we can do this on the, on the next session. Okay. The, um, the uh, next session, Jeff, is um, it's on releasing the voice. So okay. that's perfect for that's the perfect gift of prophecy. Time. Sure. Yeah, so take take your time, hon. Oh, okay. This has been All right, that'll work. This is what we call prophetic teaching. He's mm -hmm. teaching right from the right from the scriptures and the Lord has given him revelation. So mm -hmm. we want to get that. Amen. Yeah. Go for it, honey. I believe one of, it seems to me, and I don't think I'm wrong, that the power gifts of healings and miracles are harder to get than the utterance and revelation gifts. Uh, you know, there's no scripture that says that. Right, yeah, I, I know what you're but saying. But it just seems from experience. Our experience has been. Has been. Um, at least for us. Hard, for us, anyway, it's been harder to get those to manifest. We have to push through more. We have to, you know, mm -hmm. because it's power. That's right. You know, I mean, it's, it's That's right. things are going to manifest. <laughs> but what we're saying with power gifts is that there's going to be a manifestation That's right. in the in the natural realm, mm -hmm. you know. It, it it it's like the grapes are up there, the fruit is up there, and we're pulling it on down. Amen. Right. And heard that concept the other day, right? Pull it on down from heaven right. and let it manifest mm -hmm. in the natural realm. And that's what that's what we're believing for right now. Even our even healing right. for our own bodies. We're right. saying, Lord, we know your word is out there by your stripes. We are healed. Mm -hmm. We're healed right now. Right. So where's the manifestation? Right. See, we're still present. Amen. amen. You 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 gotta always be pressing God. Mm -hmm. Amen. What's up? A you know, amen. You know. And you know, and if you don't faint, you're gonna reap. That's right. Praise God. That's the word of God. So and amen. so the other the point I wanted to make was sometimes uh, we know of of uh, great uh, <clears throat> men and women of the past uh, that had great healing miracles. You know, uh, Catherine Kuhlman, A.A. Mm -hmm. a. Allen, mm -hmm. uh, Smith Wigglesworth, mm -hmm. you know, on, on and on. There's quite a collection of them. Yeah. Amen. Well, I've seen the reason to read and study their life in ministry. And one of the things I've discovered is a lot of those ministers didn't have those kinds of gifts operating in f that frequently except towards the end of their life in ministry. And, uh, you know, like for example, and another thing I noticed was just about all of them began as evangelists. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's anybody that needs signs, miracles, and wonders, it's evangelists. Amen. Because they're out there confronting the power of the devil yeah. head on. They're on the front line. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, they're mm -hmm. and they're presenting the gospel mm -hmm. You know, how many evangelists do you know that can lay hands on the sick and they're healed? Mm -hmm. How much more effective do you think an evangelistic campaign would be if we could lay hands on the sick and they were recovered? You betcha. Amen. Or we could see mm -hmm. miracles. Mm -hmm. Or you could cast demons out of people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, yeah amen. amen. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, so the thing I'm trying to say is it takes time to grow in the Christ-like character necessary to have those gifts in a, a consistent manifestation. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that. Mm -hmm. um, you see it in, the, in uh, the early church. It sounds like, you know, one week they were in Jerusalem and the next week they were in Samaria, uh, you know, with a big miracle campaign and all that. No, there was 20 years between that time. And yeah, in, <laughs> that's in, a good point. You know, in yeah. Jerusalem and that's Samaria. Right. That's right. And, and you have yeah. to do some growing up. Yeah. 
And one of the reasons for it, I think, is, is when power manifests, it's a real appeal to, to pride. Oh, yeah, you got to be careful. Oh, man, you yeah. got to be so careful. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Because power, yeah. when power, when healing begins to manifest, People are going to praise you. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, you know, it's a real, it could be a real ego trip. Yeah, you got to be it, careful. It takes a lot of Christian maturity mm -hmm. and character yes, to resist does. all that. Right. You know, to give glory to God because God did it, not you. Mm -hmm. Smith Wigglesworth never worked a miracle in his entire life. Mm -hmm. He never healed anybody. But the Holy Spirit through him did. Yeah, amen. <clears throat> so, I think that's one of the reasons. Now, I'm not saying that to discourage you. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that so that you don't give up. Right. Because that's the reason we have to grow in Christ-like character. So, if you want to manifest miracles and healings and deliverances and all these wonderful things, you have to be very Christ-like. Mm -hmm. You have to walk in love. You have to know the Lord. Amen. If you want gifts of power, get to know the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Know Jesus as your Savior. Mm -hmm. Know Jesus as your healer. Mm -hmm. Know Jesus as the deliverer. Yes. Amen. Know Jesus as the provider. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> know Jesus yeah. as the miracle worker. Amen. Right. God will do anything you ask him to do for you if you ask in faith. And we, and we got a question there. Okay. Right? Knowledge of God through his word. We must know his word. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word, this word, mm -hmm. of God. So that faith comes, then God gives you a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. He tells you what to, what to do. Mm -hmm. Say something like, go lay hands on that person, or mm -hmm. uh, pray for this. or, mm -hmm. And then your Holy Spirit directed and when that happens, brother, things happen. Yes, amen. 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 <clears throat> is dreams the same? Requiring to, to one has dreams and the other give interpretation. No. We're not talking about dreams. Okay, so so um, dreams and visions. Um, right. Oh, okay, so I, I, I think what they're referring to is that um, some people say that they have the gift of interpretation of dreams. Yeah. Okay. All right. Where is so, that in the scripture? Yeah. Right. So, so what Apostle Jeff's pointing out is that, you know, that's, a, again, a semantics thing. That's a way that we talk about it. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, some some people, some prophets especially. Yeah. Uh, okay. So prophets are called to revelation, right? Mm -hmm. So the so the, the, the word of God says, you know, I mean, that's part of the gift set. Mm -hmm. for the for the prophet is dreams mm -hmm. and visions and those kind of things right um many times mm -hmm. uh more times than not let's say like like that um that you know when when you get a dream uh m many prophets can interpret that dream and if not they'll ask for revelation from from the lord because it's part of the revelation okay and and so there oh, is here's a, a clarification on the question they're referring to tongues is one is one gift and interpretation is another is it the same for dreams no and that's let, what possible let, just let me add something here okay it is possible that a prophet or a prophetically gifted person can know what you dream and interpret it i don't see that in the new testament i see it in the old okay mm -hmm. because people weren't born of the spirit they needed that help Mm -hmm. Now we have the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Now, a few, quite a few years ago now, but for a while there, there was uh, a group of prophets running around that claimed they had the uh, interp dream interpretation. Personally, I think that's not quite right. The way I look at it today, if God gives you a dream and it's from God, you'll remember the dream and you'll know what it means. And um, and so I'm going to tack on to that too. Yeah, okay. but yeah. I've, I've had dreams. Yeah. Not very often, but I've had dreams. Mm -hmm. And when I was done, I knew they were from God and I knew what they meant. Mm -hmm. I don't like this running around all over looking for a dream interpreter. Mm -hmm. 
and you'll get three or four interpreters. And you'll end up so confused and so easily deceived. Forget that. If you've had a dream, you ask God what it means. You're a child of God. He's your father. You have the spirit. You seek what it means. Everybody wants somebody else to do it for them. Get off your sanctified do-nothing and pray and ask God to reveal to you. We have words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Amen. Amen. We, we don't need any dream interpreters. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to say it's, you know, never happens. Because yeah. as soon as you say something never happens, that's the one thing that is going to happen. Okay. All right? But so so, I'll, so I'll, <coughs> I'll, I'll give the balance to that. Okay, so they, 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 they chuckle in the background when, when we do this. Okay. All right, so Apostle Jeff. Uh, he's he's right on his side, and I'll I'll give you the other balance. So I have more dreams than, than Apostle Jeff has because my right. my first calling was prophet. Okay, mm -hmm. so so I, I am a prophet. I'm also an apostle, but I function uh, primarily in, in in the in the prophetic, right. and the apostolic is growing. I want to say that because I want to throw out the the apostolic because we're now moving in that. Amen. Right. Praise God. We're ordained in that and mantled in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have more dreams and visions than than Apostle Jeff does. Okay. Mm -hmm. And but even then, it's not every day, every week, right. or every month. Right. Some you some know? prophets, uh, they're more seers. Right. I'm more Seer of a, prophets dream more. Than, I'm more of an Abbey right. flow, but the seer gift in, is coming mm -hmm. up also. And prophets can have both, okay? Right. You don't have to be locked in a box here. And it was prophesied that we're going to have a lot of dreams and visions. So I've been mm -hmm. really pressing God for that. I want more dreams and visions. All right? Because dreams are very helpful. They'll, they'll show you many, many things, and visions too. They'll show you many things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the Navi flow, it, it's wonderful. Whatever way God reveals to you is wonderful. But um, So I'm having more dreams, bottom line. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently some of them, um, I, I know they're of God, but I don't have the interpretation right, right away. Mm -hmm. So I have a seer friend. She mm -hmm. operates more in the seer flow than the Navi flow. Mm -hmm. And so I do go to her because I know she's got a right on word. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, again, this is what Apostle Jeff is talking about, that um, you know, we've had people come to us and they really get confused because they've gone to 10 different people and they got right. 10 different, 10 different ideas. ideas. So here's you the balance. You can do that with your prophetic word, too. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dear Lord. Yeah. Uh, you know. So here's here's some balance, okay? Here's just, right. just some wisdom, mm -hmm. okay? And go to people that you know are anointed of God and have what we call a track record that they have an accurate prophecy. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to go to people who are accurate, not novices yeah. all over the planet. Yeah. That's what he's trying to say. And even okay. more important, you're going to somebody that ha it, it has, mm -hmm. that cares about you. Yeah. But Especially mm -hmm. a minister who has responsibility mm -hmm. for your spiritual care. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pastors... All the fivefold, but especially pastors, have the responsibility before God, not men, but before mm -hmm. God, to have the watch care mm -hmm. over your soul. Mm -hmm. And so you go to people that you know. You don't go in the shopping. They were doing this in the shopping mall, running around one time with dream interpretations. Everybody got carried away with it, myself included. I'm serious. <laughs> you didn't get carried away, honey. Well, <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. Sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> we all kind of can't imagine you got carried away with that. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> well. I'm just kidding. It, you know, it, it, there's fans yeah. that come along, yeah, okay? Right, yeah, That's what I hear. And like with every truth that God restores, there's a fan that comes with it. Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. For a while there, there was these uh, super prophets, whatever they call them, <laughs> master prophets. And, 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 <laughs> police. So, <laughs> you know, and, and <clears throat> I know. That's I, a good one. I forgot that one. <laughs> yeah, I was talking with Bishop about it one day, and, and he laughed. He, we even had one in Christian International, and Bishop kicked him out because he was a nut. <laughs> Listen, so, folks, that's getting puffed up in pride, man. You better well, watch those titles, man. Yeah, I'll tell I mean, you, man, pride goes before a fall, the, man. Pride goes before destruction <laughs> and a haughty spirit oh, before a fall. We don't want anything to do with that. Oh, God, we've seen what a, what a fall <laughs> looks oh, like. Oh, believe man. Me. Oh, man, you know, I'll tell you, that I means. forgot that. So, yeah. so hun, let me let me just finish this up. So, okay. so, um, so my, my friend operates more in seer, 
And she has a lot of dreams and visions. I mean, they're 3D color. You know, there are levels in dreams and visions just like the just like the prophetic. Every gift in God, there are levels no matter what it is. That's right. Amen. He is infinite. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've never arrived. He's infinite. That's there's right. always another level. <laughs> and there's always, by the way, there's another purging that goes with that level. Oh, yeah. Okay, that'll be in this week's newsletter. Okay. Oh, Lord. But anyway, I'm kidding. <laughs> but there's grace. Amen. We claim grace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, but it's worth it all because we mm -hmm. want the anointing. Praise God. Praise Taste God. and see the Lord is good. So, mm -hmm. so she, um, so she'll spend a day or two uh, praying. You know, there's, sometimes there's pieces of the thing that, mm -hmm. uh, that the Lord didn't reveal to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes he, you know, he's okay. I mean, he, he wants you to, to go to another person, but make sure it's the right person. Okay. Right. So, but what Apostle Jeff is saying is that we've had experience with people going to 20 different people and they get all confused. Oh, wow, and then they, wow. then they come back to us and say, well, why do we have these 20 di different in, interpretations? Because okay? you went to write 19 wrong ones. And, you know. So, so you want to pick out, you know, the person that you know, persons or persons that you know hear from the Lord, mm -hmm. that have what I call a track record. You know, they have accurate words, right. and and they're and they're 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 mature right. in Christ. Right. Okay, they've been ministering a while. Mm -hmm. They've been out there a while. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, not a novice. Okay, because right. that can mess you up. You know, and mm -hmm. and the devil would love to distract you and, and get right. you off path. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, and in 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 dreams, I have learned from my seer friend. Everything mm -hmm. when it's a godly dream, everything in the dream matters. That's right. Even the even the color of the person's whatever they are, how they look, uh, everything. So there's mm -hmm. many things that can be revealed through that. Uh, if if yeah. you want a good source on dreams and visions, go to mm -hmm. Apostle Jane Hammond. She right. has a wonderful book on dreams and visions. Right. Uh, it, uh, she's balanced. Right. Uh, in in her dream and interpretation, she has right. a lobby flow and a seer flow. Right. And uh, that's Bishop's daughter-in-law. And uh, she's balanced. Okay, that's a very good she source. She has the best teaching and, on dreams and visions that I know of. And, and there might be others out there oh, we're, sure we're just not is. aware of, but, but just, just go to a, a quality source. Right. Okay, and that's what Apostle Jeff is, is trying to say, because over the years of us pastoring and, and, and apostling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you might say shepherding. I'll, I'll um, put it this way, for myself. Yeah. I, nobody else has to do this. This is the way I look at it, all mm -hmm. right? Joseph was a dream interpreter, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Daniel was a dream interpreter, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You didn't have to tell them what the dream was. Mm -hmm. They told you what the dream was yeah, and was, then was, interpreted it. That was pretty amazing. Now, if you can do that, I'll have a reason to listen to you. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll ask God what it means. That's <laughs> just me. You can do what you want. Amen. 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 So we're just trying to give a little balance there, okay? Yeah, because Different sometimes, approach. sometimes you know, I just get tired of the screwy Louis. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I just do. Uh -huh. Because it messes people all up. Yeah. And I there's do. no reason when you own a Bible and are born of God mm -hmm. that you need to get messed up. Amen, that's right. But, it, you know, it's hard to misunderstand, but there's a lot of that help out there if you want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you, got, you, you just mm -hmm. got to be careful. That's all right. Amen. That's all it's, we're saying. Yeah. I'm not saying there isn't anybody that does it, or it isn't, Amen. you know. I'm just saying there's be, be a careful. lot more out there that's screwy than, than's right. Yeah, well, I want to tell you, the Lord just gave me a warning mm -hmm. uh, on one of the 4 o'clock download, I think it was yesterday, mm -hmm. that the false prophets are arising even more yeah. in, in this season. That's another sign that we are definitely in the last days. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you have to be very careful. Uh, who you're going to as a, as a source of your in, information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Okay, honey, what else did, did you have there? All right. There's, I want to, I'll conclude with this. Mm -hmm. It's a very well-known scripture if you're prophetic or Pentecostal. Acts 2-4. And you're all, oh, wait a minute. Uh, where am I at here? Anyway. What's the gist of your thought, honey? Well, the gist of my thought is that the reason uh, for the gifts... Oh, here it is. Acts 1.8. I'm sorry. Acts 1.8. It says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Okay? So, when the Holy Spirit manifests, 
there's power that comes. And that power is for a purpose. And that's to witness to Jesus Christ. So if you want power gifts, you need power gifts if you're a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. If all you're doing is sitting home watching as the stomach turns on television, <laughs> you don't need any power. But if you're confronting the powers of hell with the word of God, you need some power. Amen. And you're going to need the power gifts. Amen. Amen. So Amen. that's what it's for. So Alice King is, is uh, one of my, I think she's one of my present partners. But anyway, I attend a word church. I can't read the rest of it. Oh, I'm sorry. With this Okay. All right. So it says, oh, sorry, honey. Uh -huh. It says, I attend a word church. Okay, that's uh, good. And, uh, and they're speaking in tongues mm -hmm. and in interpretation. So they have a tongues lot. with interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, no prophecy is given unless it's given by the guest pastor mm -hmm. who operates in the prophetic. Mm -hmm. I have never heard anyone in the church give give gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Is this typical in churches that are not like CLC? Uh, here's the thing. The word of faith, all right, for whatever reason, Kenneth Hagin, which was one of the, like, the father of the word of faith movement, mm -hmm. the way Bishop and others are the fathers of the prophetic, mm -hmm. He came out with the statement that only the fivefold or ministers could prophesy. And so for the most part, especially the ministers that are trained by Rhema Bible Church, and I'm not just casting any dispersions on them. Amen. Amen. They're, they're a great ministry. We love Word of Faith. Yep. We love Kenneth Coleman. We read their stuff. Yep. Amen. When I'm down in my faith, I get a... Kenneth Copeland book and mm -hmm. get myself built and back Hagen up. And too, yeah. Yeah, Hagen too. I've got a lot of his yeah, books. Yeah, we got all their stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But they were like the tongues with interpretation came from Pentecost. Alright? The Pentecostal movement. Speaking in tongues and then interpreting it. Okay? And that's what was allowed for. That's what was taught. Now, I don't think, and I could be wrong, but I don't think in most word churches that believers are taught to prophesy. And that's why you don't see it among the believers. If you're not taught it, you can't. And the, the leadership, see, that's why your covering is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alice, this is why, um, and I'm going to be very careful here, amen, because mm -hmm. we don't proselytize. No. Okay, but, you know, people come into our church. Let's take our church, okay? We are called a prophetic church. We're not Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. We we came out of Pentecostal. Actually, I started as a Baptist. I think uh, Jeff, what did what did you start as Methodist? Methodist. Okay, so I, I started. Was a good, quiet Methodist boy. Okay, so I started. I, I, mean, I you didn't grew, even raise your hands unless you needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with the Baptists. Then my mother swung towards the Pentecostals, and started moving in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. And then uh, when I married Jeff in ninety. When I, when I marry you, 86. Uh, Somewhere back there. Yeah, 86. And then the Lord called us to the prophetic in 96. Right. We didn't even know what it was called. We just knew we were called the gifts of spirit. Right. Um, and so we learned about the, the prophetic movement right. uh, in 96. Yeah, by the supernatural act of God, really. Amen, you yes. And, we were and in the right place at the right time. So our church is called a prophetic church. When, right. you, when you come into a prophetic church, mm -hmm. what that means is that we believe in the fivefold, Ephesians 4.11. That right. there are modern day apostles and right. prophets and teachers and right. pastors. Right. Okay. We believe in that. Now, mm -hmm. some of the Pentecostal churches, it's in the scripture. Uh, they believe it from the scripture. They believe that but apostles they don't are missionaries. It. They don't practice it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, they don't they don't teach right. it. Right. Right. And so if you're See what's taught is what manifests. That's right. That's what I was so gonna say. So tongues with interpretation manifest because mm -hmm. that's what's taught. Right. Well thank God for it, because tongues with interpretation is prophecy. Right. In our church we believe in all of it. Right. So and practice it, and our and our uh, we're are more mandated to train it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we so all of our people prophesy. When you come into our church, right. we got two hundred plus people. Uh, right. We even tell them you just sit in the pew, and sooner or later the anointing's coming right. on you. And right. and even our even our babies, what what right. we call our our babies that just got saved, praise God. Mm -hmm. They're in a they're they're baby prophets. Amen. Amen. They're not mantle well, prophets yet, but and training. They're, that's what I mean. They're right. they're children. They're they're in the spirit, mm -hmm. but they're getting words of knowledge, words right. of words. I mean, just sitting there in the pew, you know. And because the anointing is present, 
okay? Because what your leadership believes in and teaches is going to come on the people. And that's why, you know, uh, I'm just getting prompted to, to remind you, um, you know, uh, was it Aaron with the oil? It came down on his, on his head, right? The anointing comes down and starts on, on the head. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever we believe, is going to come down, down to everybody else. It's going to go down to everybody else. So most of the folks in our church that want it, and we always say, if you don't want it, it's okay, you know, right? I mean, yeah, you, you don't have to receive it. You don't force anybody. Sure. But if you want it, you can get right. it because we teach it. Right, and, and it's and available. And we also pray and in, impart it. And we, we activate believe, it. It's called believe, activate. Right, and we yeah. believe in impartation. Now, I kind of forget what word of faith uh I know they believe in impartation, but see, Word of Faith believes more along the lines that these things are only in the fivefold, you know, uh, you know, somebody, and I remember seeing, Yeah, I know, what you're I know Kenneth Copeland in the early days, he used to be a prophesy and be a prophet, still does. Yeah, he, I heard him it's, prophesy the other day. Yeah, especially when mm -hmm. he comes to Woodbridge here, Yeah, he gets a real word for the country. Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, but so you know, unfortunately, the word of faith doesn't teach to the people the gift of prophecy and prophesying. There's a lot of churches that know it's real, mm -hmm. and they don't teach it for the same reason they don't teach the deliverance ministry, mm -hmm. because things get messy. Well, the other thing is, is that they yeah. might not know how to do it. Well, okay. they know, but you okay. Know. Well, I'm just gonna you know cut them some slack there. They may not they, they may not feel comfortable with it. Okay, I remember when Jeff and I first got started, mm -hmm. we believed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just didn't know how to do it, and right. we, had, we had to see it. Yeah. Okay, when we went when we got into prophetic churches and saw how they did it, now mm -hmm. we understood. Right. Praise After God. being taught. Yeah, yeah. We went to a lot of training. Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, mm -hmm. uh, so Alice, I hope that 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 helps. We're not trying to bring any disparaging comments on anybody. Right. Uh, praise God. So, but, but for the most part, and that's why you see uh, uh, anyone in the church give a prophecy, uh, unless given by a guest pastor who operates in the prophetic. Mm -hmm. Well, see, first of all, uh, that's why it's that way. If you're a pastor, you can prophesy. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're a deacon, you can't. <laughs> All right, so, okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. That, that's just a, a place where the prophetic and the word of faith kind of come at a little parting of the ways, you might say. And, and the funny part of it is most of the ministers in the prophetic came out of the word of faith. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's not yeah. like we're against the word of faith. No, we're grateful. We're we're blessed by yeah, it. Yeah, we're blessed but by we it. We just go a little bit further on than they do. Alice, be it done unto you according to your faith. <coughs> Amen. Amen. See, we're always learning never to limit God. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can we do that? How do you recommend praying to ask for the gift of interpretation? Because I'm constantly dreaming. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to interpret my own dreams. Mm -hmm. And I have prayed and continue to pray, but maybe I need to be saying something specific. Mm -hmm. Can I take that one? That you right? sure can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that right. one's for you, prophet. Go for it. Amen. Well, I, I, and I, I've done the same thing. That's why I want to take it because, okay. you know, I'm always asking the Lord for, for more. But this is all part of the revelation gifts, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you. I just, I'm just getting prompted for you. Go to Ephesians 1.18. Mm -hmm. Okay, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That's all talking about revelation, okay? Mm -hmm. Ask the Lord to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, your spiritual hearing, mm -hmm. your spiritual understanding, and say, Lord, reveal it to me. Yeah. And and I'm also getting a prompt on another thought for you, that if the, you're, you're praying and praying and praying and the revelation does not come, then listen. It may it, not be a dream from God. Right, yeah. it, right on, honey. And then the other pieces is that there could be some emotional pieces in your emotional right. realm that got inserted, okay? Because you, you have to remember that Everything is filtered through our body. <laughs> okay. Through our brain, primarily. Amen. And so what I'm trying to say is that the the dream you had may not have been 100% of God. Maybe 80% of it was. Mm -hmm. And 20% was an emotional piece that got stuck in there. Okay? So I'm just saying, you know, cut yourself a little slack and just, just pray. And if all of the revelation for all of it does not come, 
Uh, don't worry about it. It doesn't mean that you failed. It doesn't mean that you're not a super spiritual or something. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, we're all growing in the things of God. Mm -hmm. All right? And I would say to you, if you have a, if you have a friend mm -hmm. uh, that you know is, you know, they, are he they hear from the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can ask them mm -hmm. to help you pray about that, that yeah. dream. Okay? And, and, and I, I and, teach, when it comes to dreams, that it should be in color. Mm hmm all right, a dream from God is in color. Mm -hmm. Black and white dreams tend to either be fleshly or demonic. And also they can be also, a lower level. Right. Now you Amen. need to know how did you feel at the end of that dream. Now we don't discern by feelings, but if this dream caused a great fear, if it caused confusion, mm -hmm. if it caused uh, you, you to... Uh, you know, uh, have a real consternation about it. Mm -hmm. God's not the author of any of those things. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, when God gives you a dream, there's generally a peace with it. You know? Mm -hmm. So you have to, uh, you know, when you're dealing with dreams, you have to go to, by each individual case. Mm -hmm. Right, that's and right. And some people mm -hmm. dream more than others. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's and okay, and this next question is er, that's a Nobby flow question. Nobby flow, what does that mean? Yeah. Okay. Nobby flow it's uh, spelled N I uh, N A B I. N A B I, Nobby. Mm -hmm. A Nobby flow means that it comes from your spirit up to your mind and you receive it. A seer anointing. And that's what we call a seer anointing. There's no, that's a nobby flow. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. A seer anointing. That's a term, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a term. A seer anointing is somebody who sees a picture. They, they do dream and, and have a lot of dreams and visions. Some do. Seers usually do. Usually do. A seer, when they minister prophetically, they, you come up to a seer in a, in a prayer line, they'll see a picture. Mm -hmm. Bishop's wife, Evelyn, was like that. Mm -hmm. She said it was like, you know, you push a button on a camera and bang, there's this picture. Mm -hmm. You know, and she would describe to this person what she saw in the picture, and, and, and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. See, because you got to understand, you don't understand, you don't understand any of it because it's not for mm -hmm. you, it's for them. Mm -hmm. See, if you want to mm -hmm. operate in Nobby Flow or Seer Anointing, mm -hmm. Please get out of the habit of interpreting. Mm -hmm. It's not your job. Mm -hmm. Just give what the Spirit gives. Amen. Because he knows who he's giving it to. Mm -hmm. He knows why he's giving it to them. Mm -hmm. And he knows what they got to go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And you don't. Amen. So just give what you get. All right? Just go with the flow. Amen. And what's the next one? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. What if you are in a church with a lot of prophetic praying but no interpretation? Is this correct? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, prophetic praying is fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, not sure what they mean by... I don't know what, I'm, they, what exactly they mean. But, by prophetic praying. Right. Um, um, is that speaking in tongues? Is that what you mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, prophetic praying... Okay, let's, let's identify mm -hmm. uh, or give a definition. Mm -hmm. Prophetic praying, praying to us means that we're praying in English and the Spirit is unctioning us to pray certain things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I might have a list of things that I, that I that Linda wants to pray about, but all of a sudden the Holy Spirit inspires me pray about this. Mm -hmm. But there's no interpretation needed because I'm praying in English. Okay, so I, I'm not sure I understand that. Well, I don't that, quite that question. get the meaning of it. Yeah, but that's but that's okay. any, any kind of prophetic praying is okay. It's correct. Sure, there's nothing wrong uh, with it. Pr prophetic praying doesn't necessarily get interpreted. Right. When you prophesy, explain prophesying for a bit. Right. Okay. So once but again, I think that's right. Part so, of the problem here. So once again, prophetic praying, okay, is just you're going with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the under with the gift of prophecy, okay. Once again, the Spirit is inspiring you, and you're speaking in English. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and just like I've been prophesying every time, I'll be prophesying again in about ten minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the gift of prophecy. Okay. No interpretation is needed for that because right. it's in English. Right. Okay. Uh, tongues with interpretation mm -hmm. means you're you're speaking in tongues, 
There's a, and and that is a there's a difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues mm -hmm. and the gift of tongues in mm -hmm. in First Corinthians twelve. Mm -hmm. Okay, gift of tongues is a special tongue, and mm -hmm. in order to understand that in our language, we need the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the gift of tongues with interpretation. Uh, we like to say is gift of prophecy takes care of both of them mm -hmm. because gift of prophecy is in English. It's in your language. Mm -hmm. So you don't need anybody to interpret because it's in English. Okay? So I hope that kind of explains that. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, but prophetic praying is always a good thing. Yeah, because with, the, with prophetic praying, what we're saying is that you're being inspired by the Holy Spirit. To pray okay. a certain thing. Right, and there might be a word of wisdom that comes out, or a word, or a word knowledge. of knowledge, or even a gift of prophecy. Right. Mm -hmm. There can be any revelation. It's revelation while you're praying, mm -hmm. okay, which is wonderful, because that, that, gets, that cuts to the chase mm -hmm. of what the Spirit is trying to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. Amen. So we hope that kind of explains it. Yeah. Any more questions out there? Andrea, we right. got anything else? And then I can always pick it up, too, so. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, well, very good. I don't good. see anything else. So. Okay, all right. Well, honey, you want to just say a prayer for yes. us, and then we'll Lord, switch. Lord, we just seal this word in Jesus' yes. name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bind any spirits of confusion that are trying yes. to confuse people. Yes. Lord, let the people who haven't heard this before or don't quite understand, let them have the boldness yes, to God. write their questions and send them in. Amen. Yes, amen. And thank you, Father, for mm -hmm. the word of God. And the revelation gifts, the power gifts, and the utterance gifts. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen. I, I've got one L by fire, honey, I want to share with you. Mm -hmm. The Lord directed me to Mark chapter 5. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we were talking about prayer cloths, mm -hmm. and I never looked at the scripture from this point of view, but they touched mm -hmm. they touched the hem of his garment. Which was cloth. Which was cloth. And mm -hmm. you'll notice that he didn't even, he didn't command the healing. They got the, the lady got the healing right away. Yeah. The woman with the issue of blood, she right. touched his cloth. Right. So there there you go. There was Jesus himself mm -hmm. and how the anointing went through that cloth right to that woman. Mm -hmm. Amen? So that's another Amen. example. And like anything Amen. else, this can be a con game. You know, you, know, you got to be careful. Send in $100 and we'll send you an anointed prayer cloth. No, just give us your address and we'll send you an anointed prayer cloth. Amen. Freely we have received. Right. Freely we have given. You can always donate. Offering, you praise can always God. Donate. Take it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. All right, All right honey. Thank, thank you very much. Right. Amen. So, Andrea, if you have some names for us here, we'll, we'll go ahead and I'm start not prophesying. Coffee, so I must be out All of right. the morning. Okay, honey. All right. Thank you, honey. I appreciate it. Okay. Amen. Good, good teaching tonight. Amen. Praise God. So, praise God. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. We want to remind you to check our website. Okay. Well, I'm waiting for names here. So, www.covenant-life-church. And again, uh, Next uh, Monday night, uh, we're going to be releasing the voice of God. We're going to teach on that. We'll add some other topics to it. Uh, you can see as we are led of the Lord, we, we add some, some things. Amen. And then uh, phase four for the discipleship class is going to start on the 13th of July. Amen. And that's going to start our spiritual warfare series. Uh, this is the first time that uh, we, this is the first time we've ever done a dis discipleship curriculum. The Lord had to start this. Uh, back in September of 2019 and so this is something new for, for us and uh, uh, we were getting people that were just newly saved which was thrilling uh, praise God and so they're being raised as, as what we call prophetic babies amen right from the start and so the Lord had spoke to us and said well are, are, are you going to dis disciple them uh, because we were used to getting uh, saints that you know had maybe come up through they've been Baptist and a Pentecostal now they're in, into the pro prophetic, God calling them into the ministry, so they're more seasoned, and so they understood a lot of things. Um, so the so we started this dis discipleship curriculum. Amen. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really good. We really liked it, and uh, praise God, it's it's been good. So we're going to be teaching on spiritual warfare uh, over the, over a series of a couple months here. Uh, there's there actually going to be ten sessions starting the 13th of July, running through the 21st of September. Um, Praise God of 20, 2020. So of this uh, of this year. So it's going to be uh, several months. There going to be over the course of uh, three months, ten sessions, and uh, we're going to we're going to teach on various aspects of spiritual war warfare. And so we want to invite you to stay tuned in on Monday night. Um, we've been praying about it, and we feel led, uh, even with the sanctuary o opening up in in time. Um, we we feel the Lord wants us to keep going with the 
with the Facebook uh, live sessions and, uh, and still uh, continuing to um, post these videos so that people can see it. So we're going to continue our Monday nights uh, right from our home and, um, and con continue teaching. Amen. So that anybody who wants to can get the, get the ben benefit of seeing the uh, video. Amen. And uh, that also helps our, our, our staff out. Amen. And so we want to thank you once again for tuning in tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And with that, we're gonna we're gonna start the prophetic uh, portion of the of the of the night here tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, we also want to invite you again. Uh, check our check our website out, and we appreciate any donation that you send to the church. And uh, if you and like Apostle Jeff said, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us. Amen. You can send. There's a contact. Uh, you can contact us through the website, uh, or you can contact us uh, directly. Amen? All right. Praise God. Amen. Father, we just stir up the anointing right now. We stir it up in the prophetic and the apostolic in Jesus' name, and we just thank you, Lord, uh, right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. So, this is a demonstration of the, of the gift of prophecy. Amen? And um, I, I personally consider the gift of prophecy one of the power gifts because all the other gifts can manifest through, through this gift. Amen. If there's healing, there can be gifts of healing that God will say, you know, your body needs to be healed, blah, blah. Amen. And, and there can be casting out of demons, binding, rebuking, and various things. So as you listen, amen, those of you who are learning to be used in the gift of prophecy and how it flows, uh, just note how God is using us in, 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 in these gifts. Uh, praise God. So you can learn a lot just by, just by hearing what the, what the Spirit is, is saying. Amen. Praise God. Okay, praise God. All right, we got uh, Reverend Brian. Hi, Reverend Brian. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. Praise God. We appreciate you. Amen. We love you in the Lord, and we honor you. Amen. As one of the ministers of the of the Lord, and I just hear the Lord say uh, that you are in full time ministry. Is what I hear the Lord say. Amen. Praise God for you. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you for Reverend Paula, Father, right now. In Jesus' name, we just stir her up another dimension uh, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit right now. For the Lord says, daughter. I am enlarging your ministry, says God. I am fine-tuning uh, some areas uh, with, within your ministry right now, says the Lord. And the Lord says that uh, the, the enemy has tried to come in like a flood with some Jezebel-type spirits to try and control and manipulate you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, be careful, uh, be, be careful, says the Lord. For the Lord says, I've, I've got your back and I've been warning you. And there's been a warning in your spirit even now. And the Lord says, that is correct. And the Lord says, be very careful. Uh, study that... Uh, uh, study the operation of the Jezebel spirit to understand how that spirit is trying to manipulate in some very subtle ways. Amen. And um, sister, I don't know if you're on our mailing list, but in fact, just just before this tonight, the Lord had me listing characteristics of the Jezebel spirit and some things that, that we got to watch out for in uh, ministry. Um, so also on Friday night, on the, on the most recent Friday night that we just did, um, or was it Sunday? It was either Friday or Sunday. We were talking about, I think it was Sunday, it was yesterday. We were talking about uh, characteristics of the Jezebel spirit. So I invite you to take a look at the, um, at the video that, that we, we just did. But it's also coming out in our newsletter. Uh, I just got done typing it tonight. And uh, so this, this week's newsletter that comes out is going to be talking about that. So I invite you, if you're not on our mailing list, uh, you can chat your email address in to Pastor Andrea there. And, and she'll make sure to get you on the, on the list. Uh, there's also a, a couple good books out there right now. Sandy Freed, Sandy and Mickey Freed. I uh, have, a, have a book on the, on the uh, dethroning Jezebel. And you're probably familiar with some of these. Uh, and there's other authors out, out there. But I'm hearing the Lord say uh, to study it, to be aware of it. Okay, because um, the enemy is trying to subtly sneak in. And, and God says that, that um, I, I've, I've given you a great and precious uh, anointing, says, says the Lord. And with you, I'm well pleased. And, uh, and the Lord says that you've done a mighty work for the, for the Lord. And I see that, that as, as we all are, you are growing too in, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And your faith uh, is, is really coming up in, in greater levels. Uh, for the Lord says that this is a season for you of greater works, of greater vision. Um, and the Lord says even refer back. Uh, Bishop Hammond's word on 2020 uh, was that this is the year of greatest accomplishments. And the, and the Lord says that. Um, we understand not to look in the, in the natural, uh, although greatest accomplishments can come through the natural, but
but it, those things that happen in the spiritual, those are the greatest, you know, uh, accomplishments. And God says that um, I'm even moving upon you with greater anointing levels in this season, says the Lord. And the Lord says, and I see you flexing your faith muscle. It's what I call it, the faith muscle, where there's some mountains in, in your life right, right now. Uh, there's job, finance, and family. Amen. And God says, and, and um, there's ministry, but uh, the other three are a little larger right at the moment. And God says that uh, he hears your uh, cry. Uh, there's, been a, there's been a need for greater finance. And God says that I'm going to break out upon you with greater finance, says the Lord. And the Lord says that also, daughter, I am with you very strongly, says God. And the Lord says that I am, I've got your back. Amen. And the Lord says, I am protecting you and I'm keeping you. And I'm pleased with you, says God. And also I hear the Lord say that these Jezebel situations are not your fault. Uh, don't let the enemy even block your mind with that or, or, you know, tell you that it's your fault for blah, blah, blah. No. Okay, these are assignments by the enemy that have been launched against you to try and take you out of ministry or undermine your, your uh, authority. And so, so the Lord says, uh, just in, in that prayer time, in that prayer closet, the Lord says, take authority over these things that are coming uh, against your anointing against your leadership and against your your ministry, uh, says God. And the, and, the, and the Lord says that, um, and sister, I don't know who your covering is, but uh, it's very important that you have the right covering. Amen? And uh, you should also be able to go to your covering uh, for prayer and support. Amen? They have them take authority over Jezebel, and I'm also getting witchcraft. Um, so Jezebel, witchcraft, man manipulation, control. Amen? And um, I just heard the Lord say, I'm a failure. Athalia, I believe um, Athalia was a, a daughter of Jezebel, and there's an Athalia spirit that is linked with uh, Jezebel, and take authority over that too, amen, and and so, so the Lord says, uh, and loose the anointing, loose the anointing of God on every aspect of your ministry, and I hear him say even your household, uh, for the Lord says that even the enemy has tried to come subtly into your household, says, says God, and the Lord says in this season, uh, daughter, I'm rooting out, amen, I'm rooting out, I'm separating the wheat from the, from the chaff, says the, says the Lord, and I'm rooting out these, uh, there's some uh, wickedness that has subtly tried to, tried to come in, uh, but the Lord says, uh, do not receive condemnation, do not receive guilt, uh, these things are, are not your fault, these are just the enemy trying to, trying to come against you uh, to take you out, remember his threefold mission is to kill, destroy, and to steal, and so the Lord says that uh, you know, it's just, it's an attack of the enemy. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, but the, the Lord delivers us out of them all. Praise God. Amen. The Lord says, daughter, with you I'm well pleased. Be encouraged this day, says God. Be encouraged this day. Encourage yourself uh, in, in the Lord, uh, says God. And sister, I see that, that you know how to do that. Uh, and, and the Lord says, just praise me. Praise me through it, says God. And I'm going to reveal to you uh, uh, what's going on behind the scenes. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for revelation right now. We stir her up, Lord, in all the gifts of the Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over that Jezebel spirit, that Athalia, control, manipulation, mind-binding spirits, witchcraft, uh, undermining. In Jesus' name, we break the power of these things, of this assignment coming over her. In the name of Jesus and over her ministry and household, we break it right now. In Jesus' name, and I loose the anointing of God right now to go down in that house. I send the war angels of God down in that house right now in the name of Jesus to clean it out. In the name of Jesus, and Father, we loose an anointing for peace, love, joy. In Jesus' name, joy unspeakable and full of glory, praise God. Father, I thank you for encouragement. I come against depression. There's been depression, condemnation, uh, guilt. That's all junk from the enemy trying to come on you. I break that right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just thank you right now for release of these things over her right now in the name of Jesus. We release encouragement to her uh, right now. Even people will rise up and cover her. Amen. And there will be greater prayer support. Amen. For her in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we just thank you right now. We just seal that word upon her right now. We charge her with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, this next word is for Michelle Lee. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to st stand by there, Michelle. I'm just getting prompted right at this moment, so I'm going to take action right at this, this moment. Uh, if anybody's listening to us tonight and you're not sure that, that you know Jesus as your personal Savior, we want to make sure that you're saved tonight. That bottom line is the most important thing is, is knowing Jesus. You have to know, praise God, that you're going to heaven and not hell. So if you're out there today and you're not sure 
and you're just passing by this Facebook uh, video or whatever and you're, you're not sure where you're at with Jesus Christ, let's just take a moment right now and let's make sure that we're saved. Amen? And it's a very simple prayer. We just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen. And if there's anybody out there tonight who wants the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that gift is available for everybody. Amen. The Lord said it, it's available for everybody. la di da and everybody. Whoever wants it. Whosoever will. Amen. So if you're out there today, amen, and, and you say, Apostle Linda, I don't speak in tongues yet, but I want to. Amen. I, I want you just to lift your hand right now, and you're going to reach out by faith. Father, we just release an anointing right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Father, we stir them up right now in the name of Jesus, and we just impart that to him, to them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If that's been you tonight for any reason, amen, and you just got saved tonight or you just received the baptism, uh, or you know, if you have a testimony for us about uh, that the that the prophecy has been, been right on and if something blessed you or whatever, the teaching blessed you or whatever, we appreciate getting your feedback, okay? Apostle Jeff and I need encouragement too, amen? And it's good to hear how God is moving, amen? It builds all of our faith, so we really appreciate that, amen? Praise God. All right, this word is for uh, Michelle Lee. Okay, Father, we just stir up right now in Jesus' name, amen? Uh, for daughter, the, the Lord says, I'm giving you even uh, expanded vision in, in this time frame uh, right, right now. And, and, and the Lord says that I'm moving upon you with a new level of the anointing, says God. I'm encouraging you this night, says the Lord. And, 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 and the Lord says only the half has been told of all that I have for you. And God says that I'm moving you into areas of business and finance and investment. There's going to be uh, some resourcing that's going to come to you in a brand new way, says God. And the Lord says that I'm even surrounding you with even new friends. There's new Christian friends coming around you, uh, says the Lord. And I'm even allowing you even to expand uh, your ministry tent pegs uh, in this season, says the Lord. Uh, for the Lord says that you've been a giver, you've been a person of hospitality, and you've been a person of compassion. And, uh, and the Lord says you've been faithful, uh, giving to the church with your tithes and offering and various things and sowing in. And so the Lord says, does not my word say in Malachi that uh, I will pour out, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you can't even contain. And so the Lord says that I am pouring out to you in this season, uh, says God. And, and the Lord says, with you I am well pleased. You've been a faithful servant in, in all my kingdom, says God. And many this day have been blessed uh, be, because of your ministry, because of, the, of your influence, the things that you have done, and the prayers that, that you have released, and the intercessory work that you have done. And the Lord says, with you, daughter, I'm very well pleased. And so the Lord says that I am even giving you the prophet's reward this night. And the prophet's reward is something that you can't buy. You know, it's like getting a healing or a miracle. I mean, you can't buy that. Praise God. And so the Lord's just going to give, do something special for you. So, Father, we just release right now those special things that, Lord, that you know what you're going to do for her. And, Father, we release that right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I just thank you right now for it in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. Yes, God. And I just hear the Lord say that, that he's lifting you up. Amen. He's lifting you up higher in this season. Praise God. Uh, there's even been some wilderness walking, some desert, or t desert walking is what I call it. It's kind of been some dry places here and there. And the Lord says, I'm bringing a refreshing upon you. This is your overall refreshing season, uh, is what I, I, I hear the Lord say. I see a quick picture, uh, a quick little vision. Of you're out, you were out in the desert, and you're coming to the oasis. Amen. And there's some lush green grass there, some trees, and some water. Amen. And the Lord says, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's a new refreshing coming upon you, even now. And I come against every form of depression and oppression right now. Any uh, uh, guilt and condemnation for anything from the days gone by. The Lord says, don't look back, look forward. You've done nothing wrong, look forward. Amen. This is a new day, a new season for you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release that upon my sister right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, I thank you, Lord. I, I heard investment. I heard all kinds of good stuff for you, man. Praise God. We just release it, and we call it forth right now to come forth and, and manifest in this natural realm. In Jesus' name, amen. And we just seal that word and we charge it to you in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. There's Renee. Renee, I meant to send you a text the other day. I'm so glad you're you're on the line tonight. Uh, I've, I've been praying for you. Praise God. Uh, Miss Renee is a member of our church and she's on the front line working and she's a nurse working in hospitals, amen. Praise God. So all covenant life, amen, wherever you are tonight, you're listening in. We need to be praying. Keep praying for her because she's on the front line. Amen. 
And we've been praying, Renee, we've been praying for protection uh, over you as we have for the whole church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we just stir up Renee right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the woman of God she is. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Renee, I'm seeing, uh, praise the Lord for you. You've been using your prophetic gifts. Way to go. Yes. Praise God. Speak into the atmosphere. You don't even, you know, you can do it under your breath. You know all the tricks. Amen. We don't have to be loud in front of people, but do your thing. Amen. Praise God. And I know you are. I sense it. I see it. Amen. I'm hearing the Lord say that. He's pleased with you, Renee. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Don't let any guilt and condemnation come upon you for any reason. Do not accept it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Just know that we are undergirding you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For daughter, I see your heart, says God. And the Lord says, I'm, I'm moving you up in the prophetic even tonight. Oh, praise God. We, we release a greater level of the anointing upon her right now in the name of Jesus. And I, I just see you even becoming even bolder, uh, even bolder with, with the things of, of God. Amen. I see you, um, you're prophesying to people on the street. Amen. Praise God. I don't know where that is, but I see you uh, prophesying to somebody like outside of a building or something. Might even be the hospital where you're at. But I see that you're, you're prophesying to people. Amen. And I, and I hear the Lord say, daughter, make sure uh, you tap into your family. Okay. There's a, there's a real anointing, uh, Renee, right now on families. God is really doing a, a new work with, with family, at least with our church. Uh, we have family prayer time. We've got a family conference coming up, prayer conference coming up, some things coming up. Um, praise God. Uh, so there's, there's family prayer time. God is reaching down to the families and saving people in our families. Amen. Praise God. There's a new impetus for that. Amen. So I'm hearing the Lord say to prophesy, uh, Renee, over your family. So you don't even have to be in front of them, you know. Amen. Just, you know, speak into the atmosphere like you've been taught and prophesy over the family that people are going to get saved. They're going to get healed. They're going to get delivered. Praise God. Amen. Also, I'm hearing awake to righteousness. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I get a laugh, Renee, because I was praying for people in my family to awaken to right, righteousness and and I found out that I needed it myself <laughs> so uh, God just told me that he says Linda I'm awakening you to righteousness too and I you know we always think we're perfect right and so we, you know, we always think we're you know and so there's new levels of revelation that are coming on me also and boy I love this prayer I'm going to keep praying this awake to righteousness because you know our 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 righteousness is as filthy rags. You know, that's what the Lord was reminding me, right? And we always think we're such good people. And, our, you know, he reminds us, our, our, you know, but don't receive condemnation. So, anyway, I'm hearing for your family, awake to righteousness. Amen? And then just see what pops. Praise God. You know, you, <laughs> amen. God is awakening all of us to new revelation, okay? And so we don't receive condemnation, all right? You know, uh, sometimes we're ignorant of things that we just don't know, and it takes revelation. That's why Ephesians 1.18 is so important, okay? Lord, I just released Ephesians 1.18 on Renee right now. Another level of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus, her eyes will be opened. Her eyes will be enlightened, uh, that she understands the hope of her calling. Praise God, in Jesus' name. There's a revelation that you understand uh, of the hope of your calling. You're called with a great call, and you're doing a great work for a great many people. Amen. And the Lord says that there's even blessing going to come upon your body. Uh, I just claim Psalm 91 over you right now. No plague will come nigh your dwelling. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we just release a shield of protection around her right now. That wherever she's at, wherever she's ministering to. Amen. Praise God. Her body is protected. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body is protected by the blood of the Lamb. We plead the blood of Jesus over her right now. And we claim Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon. And this virus is a weapon. No weapon, no weapon formed. That's a weapon that was formed. No weapon formed. Amen. Praise God. No weapon that is formed is going to come against you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She is protected in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'm hearing the Lord say, Renee, remember to use wisdom. Okay? Use wisdom. Okay? Because we know you're protected, but use wisdom. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You know, we're, we're protected from oncoming cars, but that doesn't mean we go out into the street and stand right in the middle. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So use wisdom, Renee. Okay? And be sensitive. I hear the Lord say that the um, 
Praise God. All the revelation gifts coming up to another level that there's a greater sensitivity uh, to the leading of the Spirit. Okay? See, He's providing all of your need. And your need is right now because you're, you're in those environments uh, where you got to know when to go in a room, when not to, what to do, what not to. He's, he's increasing uh, the, the revelation upon you. Amen? So you can hear better. You can see better. Remember, Renee, speak in tongues more, sister, okay? Speak in tongues. Okay, use your gifts. Praise God, I encourage you. And if, and if you don't feel like speaking in tongues, that's when you need to speak in tongues. Praise God, because that means, that means the enemy is trying to stop you, trying to block you. Okay, don't let him stop you. You're a great warrior. Amen? I see you all armored up. You're a true devil. Amen. We, we love you in the Lord. Father, amen. And we're undergirding you too. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we release right now that protection around Renee right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for her faithfulness. In Jesus' name, we stir her up to another dimension of all these giftings right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over her. And again, we claim Psalm 91 and Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against her shall prosper. Amen. It will not prosper in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we release that protection right now in Jesus' name. Praise God. And encouragement. I release encouragement. I come against any form of depression. Amen. Renee, also I'm getting prompted to remind you that when you're in those kind of environments, remember there's all kinds of demon spirits walking around. Okay? And um, when, when people pass away, the demons that were in them leave. And they're looking for another host. They're looking for another place. So they're walking around. So bear in mind... Uh, that when the Lord prompts you to be binding stuff, it doesn't mean that it's always like coming against you directly or it's your problem, okay? Amen? So just be sensitive. We just release discerning of spirits to another level in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, we seal that word right now, and we release it to her in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We charge you with it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Um Karoki Kelly, okay, not sure that I said it right. I apologize if I said it wrong. Amen. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Amen. Father, we just thank you for my sister in the name of Jesus. And the Lord says that uh, you heard some of the things tonight uh, kind of for the first time. There's a little different way of presenting some, some things. Uh, I hear the Lord say you received everything really well. Praise God. Amen. And uh, you have some questions still. You have some questions about something. So feel free to uh, send those, those questions in. Okay, you can even chat in now if, if you like to. Amen. But the Lord says that, uh, daughter, it's a season of training for you, says God. You're called to the prophetic. And the, and the Lord says it's a season of training. It's a season of impartation, what we call impartation to you. God wants to impart more revelation knowledge in these areas and grow you into a new dimension of moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so the Lord says get all the training that you can get in this season. And, and uh, just by way of instruction, if you're not, if you don't have a local prophetic church where you can get instruction, you can always always go online or tap into Facebook. Praise God. Uh, buy books uh, on the prophetic. You know, get resourcing. Uh, get some resources on on the topic. Because I Lord, I hear the Lord say that you're called to this. He wants to move you out more in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be activated. Amen. And and the Lord says, daughter, I've even called you to uh, aspects of min of international ministry says God. You're going to be traveling in the days that are ahead, says God. And the Lord says, not only are you going to be ministering to your family, but you're going to be ministering to extended family, and you're, you're going to be ministering, uh, I even hear outside of the United States, there's going to be an opportunity that's going to arise for you. And there's going to be some uh, opportunities via social media that is going to cause you to even uh, expand and, and touch people outside of the United States. So the Lord says, be open uh, to what he's doing in, in your life even now. Be open to receiving uh, fresh revelation by the Spirit. Amen. When you read the Word. And the Lord says be open uh, to receiving training. Uh, receive pro prophetic training. Because the Lord says I'm moving you up in this season, says God. And the Lord says my hand is mightily upon you. And the Lord says that I'm going to even be uh, causing other people uh, to come across your path, says God. And you're going to be uh, meeting... Um, uh, more, uh, okay, it's Carol Kelly. Okay, sorry, Carol Cloud. Carol, all right, but the Lord is going to be having you meet uh, more people. Um, you're going to be coming, you're going to encounter more prophetic people, okay? And um, uh, and so you're going to become acquainted with that term even more, and, and you're, you're going to be, and God's going to be enlarging your, your tent pigs even personally uh, to in, encounter that. 
Amen. And so the Lord says, daughter, I have new uh, uh, things for you in this season, says God. It's truly a new season for you, uh, says, the, says the Lord. And so the Lord says, uh, do not be shy about getting training, getting teaching, says God. Get all you can get uh, right now, says the Lord, because I'm moving you up, uh, says, says the Lord. And uh, Carol, there will be, um, uh, if, if you're not able to get some training or teaching in the next few months, something like that, you're going to find out that there's more of a frustration that's building in, in your spirit. Because as a result of this word, he's activating you into that realm. And he's, and he's saying, get some more training. Amen. So you're going to, your spirit is going to want more. Amen. Um, you're, you're not going to be satisfied uh, with other things. You're going to, you're going to want more. Amen. So that's just the spirit because that's, that's how he encourages us, uh, us to keep going. So father, we release that right now in Jesus name. We stir up in the, in the, in the prophetic in, in Jesus name, the revelation gifts are coming. Uh, there's more activation in the area of, of the revelation gifts right now. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits coming up to new levels in Jesus name. I see that you've already been used in uh, word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And the Lord says that that's, that's going to be really coming up more. Amen. Praise God. You're sensing more things too. Amen. Dreams and visions will, will be coming uh, a little bit more. A amen. But uh, I'm really hearing the Lord say revelation gifts. So, Father, we stir her up right now in the name of Jesus, and we release that to her right now in Jesus' name. I come against any forms of depression uh, as a result of this pandemic going on and these, all this chaos in the world today. Uh, Father, all these uh, very tragic things happening in the news and... Uh, uh, all, all these things, and, uh, Lord, we just release right now a, a joy from the Holy Spirit and encouragement. Encourage your Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we encourage you in your job and your employment areas right now and finance in Jesus' name. And Father, you're the provider of all our need. And Father, we release that to her right now. New provision for this new hour, this new season, this new era in the name of Jesus. New provision in the name of Jesus. We release it in Jesus' name. You're called to wealth. I just heard the Lord say, uh, Lord, we release a transference of wealth to her. We call her forth to wealth and prosperity. Amen. In Jesus' name. She'll have no lack, no lack in the name of Jesus, Father, because you're the provider. And Lord, we just release that to her right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We charge you with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. All right. This is for Janet Royals. Hi, Janet. How are you tonight? Thanks for tuning in. Praise God. Amen. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for Janet Royals. Amen. Uh, Father, we stir her up in the prophetic and the apostolic right now in Jesus' name. And the Lord says that you have such a compassionate heart and you've given to many people. Uh, there's a hospitality uh, that a gifting that is, is upon you. And the Lord says, don't, uh, um, even in this season, the Lord says, uh, don't be afraid to give a cup of cold water in Jesus' name. Meaning, uh, even pray whatever, whatever you can do to extend Jesus to, to, to people. Amen. Uh, Janet, I'm hearing the Lord say uh, there's an evangelistic call. There's an evangelistic thrust uh, that is, is upon you. Amen. And so the Lord says, and you've already gotten some people saved. Amen. And there's a boldness, uh, even greater boldness that's coming upon you uh, to evangelize. Amen. Uh, so the Lord says, don't be afraid to do that. He'll give you strategies, even in this season, for how to do that, to uh, leave tracks in places or do a blog or something. Amen. But the Lord says that there's a strategies that he's going to give you uh, for, for evangelizing. Amen. So the Lord says, don't be afraid to step out in faith and, and do that as he's leading you. Amen. And the Lord says also, um, daughter, there's even a special anointing uh, for you to minister to your family in, in this season, as you already heard me talking about. Amen. The spirit is really moving uh, in, in, the, in the family dimension, the family unit. Amen. So the Lord says, even in your extended family, don't be afraid to step out in faith. Amen. And minister to the, to the family. Our elder did something really cool. She's, she's got a family prayer time going. Once a week, she gets whoever dials in. She uses the free conference calling line, and she tells the family members, um, you know, hey, we're praying at 8 p.m. on Tuesday or whatever night it is. Anybody who wants to dial in, dial in, and we're going to pray for the family. It's really cool. It's a great idea. And uh, it's really w working out really well. And we started doing that for the church. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. It's been good. And uh, so we're, we're getting, you know, we want to get the family saved. Amen. You don't want any family member going to hell. Amen. Praise God. You don't want anybody going to hell. So we, we want to get everybody saved. Amen. And so uh, so I'm just hearing the Lord say, daughter, step out in faith. Amen. 
and, and get the family together and get praying for them. Amen. And stir them up in the things of God, says the Lord. And the, and the Lord says, uh, use that evangelistic thrust. And, 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 and the Lord says, speak the words of God. Okay, speak life into the family. Amen. And don't worry about the circumstances. Don't worry about, you know, what the devil is doing there. You know, focus on God, the author and finisher of our faith. And, and build them up spiritually and focus on Jesus. Amen. You just focus on Jesus. Praise God. And the Lord will break open. He's Lord of the breakthrough. And the, and the Lord says that I'm going to break through and break out on you and your family, says the Lord. And you're going to see some things in your whole family turn around, says God, because you are doing this, says the Lord. Boy, praise God. I got encouragement for my own family on that one. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So praise God. So break out on him. Break out. I, I see the word break out. Break out. Break out. Uh, meaning loose the anointing. Amen. For signs, miracles, and healings. Loose the anointing for salvation, healing, and deliverance on, on your family, even on yourself. You can anoint yourself. Amen. Lord, I anoint myself for healing. Amen. Deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. We have not because we ask not. We don't limit God. Amen. Praise God. Take the limits off God, Janet. Amen. Praise God. The Lord is calling you to higher dimensions of faith and, and, and believing in him for great things. And he says to remind you, daughter, this is a season of signs, miracles, and wonders, says the Lord. Be it done unto you according to your faith. Speak to the mountain, says God. Speak to the mountain. I see you got four mountains. I see four mountains sitting here. Okay. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, you need some healing. Praise God. You need some finance. Yeah, there's something going on with job and then family. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just speak to healing right now. In Jesus' name, we just come against every type of disease, infirmity to try to attack your body, even allergies in the name of Jesus. I break the power of that in the name of Jesus, and I lose healing right now in Jesus' name. In the area of family, amen, I just hear the Lord say you're going to speak in your family as, as we've just been talking about. Even in the area of job and finance, Father, I just lose right now even a miracle provision, amen, in Jesus' name on our financing and job situation in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you right now. We just lose that in the name of Jesus, I come against every form of depression and oppression that's trying to attack you because of these seasons that we are in. And we break the power of those assignments over you right now in Jesus' name. And I loose an anointing for joy. I loose an anointing for love and peace in the name of Jesus. And just stir her again in the prophetic Father in Jesus' name. And we seal the word and charge her in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, Pastor, looking for Ellen by fires there if you have anybody, anything there. Amen. So while I'm waiting... Amen. We just want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Praise God. We want to remind you that next Monday night is the last Monday uh, discipleship class for this particular phase uh, for the prophetic. And then we're going to go into spiritual warfare and demonology beginning July 13. Okay. Praise the Lord. We want to thank you again for tuning in. Tomorrow night is prayer tabernacle. Amen. And Pastor Andrea is going to be running that. Uh, she has a dial in. Uh, so anybody can participate. Amen. And so they pray up a storm. The prayer, the prayer team prays up a storm. That's tomorrow night uh, at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Okay. And it's all dial in. So it's real simple. Just get on the phone. Amen. And then uh, Friday night. Amen. This next weekend, praise God, is an exciting weekend for us. Uh, Friday, Pastor Sean is going to be speaking. It's Father's Day weekend. Pardon me. And so I want to remind everybody, honor your fathers. Amen. Whoever they are. You may have spiritual fathers. Amen. We have spiritual father in the faith. We have Bishop Hammond as our spiritual father. And we have another gentleman that, that also mentored and trained us uh, that, that, that we regard as a father figure, a spiritual father figure. So we send cards to them and offerings and various things, whatever we can do to make them happy. Amen. And then uh, my natural father, our natural fathers are not with us anymore. They're with Jesus. But praise God, they're in a better place. But whoever your fathers are, you want to honor them. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for them. Amen. Um, okay, let's see. I had one L by fire here. There was praying in tongues, but no interpretation, not surf. Okay. All right. So um, when you're operating in the gift of tongues, okay, uh, then we can believe for the gift of interpretation to interpret those tongues. Um, I've been in churches. I was in a Pentecostal church some years ago where someone, and this was before I was even called to the prophetic. I understand now what happened afterwards. But, um, uh, you know, it takes people to be bold 
and to know that they're hearing from God to actually interpret that tongue. So what, I'm, what I want to say is that a lady stood up and she was speaking in tongues. I mean, she stood up in the congregation and all of a sudden she had what I would call the gift of tongues. And, and then she sat down. Now, back in the day, uh, you know, I'm 58 years old, so I've, I've been in some Pentecostal churches years ago that this is how they did it because they didn't have the revelation that we have now, okay? And um, they just would stand up at any time and give a, a tongue, okay? So this Pentecostal church that I happened to be in, the preacher was preaching, and all of a sudden the lady stood up and she said, right? Right? And uh, so she gave her gift of tongues. And then she sat down. And everybody, there was a holy hush. Everybody was quiet. Okay? Because they're waiting for the interpretation. Well, nobody stood up with the interpretation. Okay? So, you know, you can believe for the interpretation, but you also got to believe that person's going to be bold to stand up. Okay? So there may or may not. There, there, we believe if there's a, a gift of tongues, there'll be a gift of interpretation. Because the Holy Spirit wants somebody to interpret that tongue, okay? Um, with the modern-day revelation that we have right now, okay, this is why uh, we see the, the, the Holy Spirit uses gift of prophecy. Because gift of prophecy is in your language. You don't need tongues with interpretation. You don't need two people. All you need is one person with the gift of prophecy, okay? But if there is a gift of tongues, normally the Holy Spirit would have the interpretation, Okay, so, you know, but again, somebody's got to be bold to stand up and, and, and do it, okay? Now, in another church, another Pentecostal church that I was in, I hope this is answering the question. Um, in another Pentecostal church that I was in years ago, uh, it, again, it was a lady who had a gift of tongues, and she stood up and, right, she was going on. And then a few minutes later, she sat down. There was a holy hush. Everybody's quiet. And then I, and then the pastor gave the interpretation. Okay, he had the interpretation. Okay, so uh, I hope that answers the question. Okay, amen. So in in prophetic churches, you don't you don't see tongues with interpretation very much because God is God is using us in gift of prophecy. Amen. So I, I hope that explains it. I didn't mean to uh, confuse you. Okay. In other churches, like the Word of Faith or whatever, uh, if they're not as experienced with gift of prophecy or, or something like that, they might still be using uh, gift of tongues and interpretation. And, you know, you have to remember that God works with us. So if the leadership of that church doesn't know how to use gift of prophecy or doesn't believe in it or is not activated in it or trained in it or whatever, the Spirit is going to use what you will let them use. Amen. So if, if you believe in tongues with interpretation and that's all you believe in, he's going to work with us. Amen? Praise God. He's a loving God. So he just wants to, he just wants to get, uh, get the anointing to you. Amen? He wants to get help to you. Amen? Praise God. So he's going to move in whatever way you allow him to move in. Okay? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Alrighty? So I hope that answered the question. Amen. Um, so again, this next weekend is Father's Day weekend, uh, and so this Sunday, starting this Sunday, we'll be back in the sanctuary, but again, we're limited to only 10 people, so it'll just be the worship team and the staff, but we'll be doing live Facebook uh, from the sanctuary. So please be in prayer for us, amen? Uh, we haven't been in the sanctuary in about three months now, so, uh, and you know, it's very important that we get back into uh, fellowshipping pretty soon, amen, and uh, being with the saints again, amen, glory to God. Uh, also... Uh, we want to get our get our worship going. Amen. Praise God. It's very important. Uh, the Lord said get the worship going. We've got to get the worship going. Amen. It's very important. Just, amen, for many reasons. Stir the spirit. Give glory to God. Amen. Uh, it feeds our own spirit. It's, worship is very important. Okay, so we uh, just encourage you to worship even in, in your own home. Amen. Worship God. He is worthy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise God. All right, so I guess that's that's it for tonight. We want to thank you again for tuning in. Please check our website. And uh, if you're so inspired by the Holy Spirit, please uh, donate to the church. We'd appreciate it. Amen. We still have bills to pay. Amen. Glory to God. All right, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
All right, praise God. He said that's it. Okay, praise the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Father, for uh, for the Spirit moving. Uh, Lord, we're so we're so thankful. Yes, God, we don't take it for granted that you're here with us. Uh, Lord, we just uh, just love you, Lord. We thank you for all the blessings, everything that you have done, Father. Father, we thank you for those who have tuned in tonight, and even uh, even after this, people are going to see this video. And so, Father, we bless them right now in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, we claim Psalm 91, amen, no plague will come nigh our dwelling. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Father, we just bless the people right now. Amen, Father. Yes, God, bless them and they're going out and they're coming in, Father. And we seal the word tonight and we charge it upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. We plead the blood over every person tonight and we say they are blessed and highly favored. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We claim Romans 8, 11 on every person. Amen. That the spirit of life is quickening our mortal bodies. We come against every sickness, disease, and infirmity right now. And we rebuke it out of our bodies right now in the name of Jesus. We claim health and healing according to the word of God that says by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And we just decree that manifestation in the natural realm even over our bodies right now in Jesus' name. And we decree there's no lack for the people of God. Amen. For, for you, Lord, are our provision. Amen. You're our Jehovah Jireh. And Lord, we claim that for every person right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We seal the word. We charge it on, charge it to him right now in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Lord, for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, beloved, thank you very much for tuning in. Amen. I'm Apostle Dr. Linda Herbert. On behalf of Apostle Jeff and I, we want to thank you. Amen. And our, on behalf of our staff as well. Amen. Good night, all.